screwed up let me know right away I think we're good though this time shouldn't have a repeat of last week or last Thursday that's right I stream twice a week now but I think we are good to go so let me just get everything ready here audio sounds good awesome there we go awesome sweet Okay, so how's everyone doing today? It's Saturday. It's the weekend. The news could finally move on to something else. You know, they're probably going to drive whatever the next thing is in the news cycle into the ground. But that's that's how she be. It don't be like it is, but it do. But it's Saturday. It's the weekend. Let's print. So, drunk again. See, I can't do that on stream. I don't think YouTube uh, approves of that. Oh. By the way, let me see if I could find this here, because I touched on it uh, last stream. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I gotta search Discord because I saved it on my main computer from me. Yeah, it doesn't want to work. But yeah. Um, Somebody joked about it, but if I swear on stream, the moment I swear, that it gets flagged, and it was true. As soon as I ended last week's stream, um, it was auto-flagged for uh, it, it, the little yellow icon for limited monetization. Not that I don't get any ad revenue anyways off these videos, but I wanted to show the picture of that because it is funny. So anyways, bonsai time. So, bit of an update. Um, I do have fluid working on it. I want to thank Cadriel. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, we did a little bit of uh, testing. Turns out it was a, a somewhat simple yet not simple issue related to the fact that I'm over UART and I had to enable something that wasn't enabled. Um, but we do have it working now uh, with Fluid. It's off right now because we know the fan is annoying as hell. Um, I do have a spool holder this time. So I won't be just, you know, boring the spool holder off of another printer. So we will be feeding it some filament. And the filament of choice, ABS. So I figured we're going to continue on with the tuning. Um, last week, we really didn't do much tuning at all. Um, we pretty much had a very basic, made sure the steps per millimeter were correct. Uh, we did a PID tune for the hot end. Um, we're gonna do a PID tune for the bed now. And uh, I gotta make sure my zero's correct because right now my X, Y, zero isn't set right. And then we're gonna do a pressure advance first. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do pressure advance with Clipper. Um, you know, you might already know how to do it. And uh, while that's going on, because it will take uh, some time for it to print the pressure advance tuning uh, cube thing, uh, we're gonna do some arts and crafts. We're gonna build an enclosure out of cardboard and tape, if I can find where I put my tape. So let's get this printer powered on. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug the fan, because I'm sure you guys don't want to listen to that all, or avoid listening to the fan as much as we uh, have to, and uh, power on. So let me just check up on chat. It's my sorry. It's my fault, sir. <laughs> so I, well, technically my channel is monetized. I'm not big enough to get any actual ads on anything. So I don't think it actually matters. 
at all. So the printer's turning on. Uh, we're gonna have to do a PID tune on the bed. We didn't do one. Now it is a 60 watt bed. Um, PID tuning probably won't do much. Okay, Captain Hologram, what is fluid? I will show you what fluid is. Once the printer boots up. And actually, I'm gonna need another printer. It's gonna be easier to show the differences with two printers. Get out of here, Benchies. There we go. Power up the V0. Okay. So I'll wait till both are online and then I'll show the differences. So, fluid and mainsail are two separate interfaces for talking with a printer running Clipper. Okay. So, Clipper has been around for a while now, over two years, I believe. Um, it's a really good firmware. It runs on your Raspberry Pi. It basically offloads all the, the thinky think portion of firmware for running a 3D printer to the Raspberry Pi so that your MCU only has to handle following, out, following instructions, essentially. So what that means is a... I know I got one. your generic cheap ramps, that's 8-bit, um, that when running Marlin chokes when you try to do Core XY over 100 millimeters a second, is now capable of doing 113,000 steps per minute, uh, or per second, uh, with three motors going. So, Fluid allow, or Clipper allows you to offload the thinky think portion and all the, the grunt work to a Raspberry Pi, which is more powerful, okay? So, for the longest time to get at Clipper, you technically could get at Clipper by itself, but everyone used Octoprint as the interface, okay? Um, oh, I don't, oh, shoot. I don't have V0. A shortcut to it saved. No, I don't, I only got Tallboy. There's your, okay, 218. Okay. Oh, actually, hey, I have them all online. This is actually the first time I've had all my printers online at the same time. Um, so, come on, load up. Waiting for everything to load. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the different interfaces um, for printers right now, or the common ones. Once everything loads up, we're waiting on one. So anyways, long story short, uh, people were running Octoprint to talk to Clipper. Um, and it works. The problem with Octoprint is it, you know what, it is kind of bloated, okay? Um, some people don't have issue with that. And the problem is though, you, you need a Raspberry Pi 3 or better. With mainsail or fluid, it's very lightweight. You're not rendering the whole website on the Raspberry Pi. It's, it's acting like a traditional website. The people who know more about the back end can elaborate more. Um, okay, right now mainsail doesn't want to watch. Yeah, too many things trying to talk. So anyways, traditionally you had, you know, Octoprint, right? It, it takes a while for the web page to load. You got to wait for it to load up. It takes a while for it to boot. This is on a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, you know, you, you do have a camera, but you also have all the add-ons. The problem is this is pretty bloated in terms of an interface. Um, now we also have Duet Web Control. This is what, you know, something running uh, RepRap firmware has access to. So this is um, my V2, uh, this guy right here. This is what this guy uses. Now, for some reason, it doesn't want to connect to my V0, but this is Fluid. So Fluid is basically another interface 
that allows you to talk to your printer. Um, but this is lightweight. This is very lightweight compared to traditional Octoprint. This runs just fine on a Raspberry Pi Zero. And even with a webcam running, uh, let me connect to it here. Uh, this is a webcam, it's running at 720p, uh, 10 FPS, I believe. Um, it looks high there at 44, but that's the webcam. If the webcam wasn't running, it would be down in the teens, and it doesn't peak when it's printing. Like, I've never had this max out the, the Pi Zero. And Core XY going fast is pretty much the easiest way to max out a printer in terms of capabilities. Delta is up there, too. Anyways, this is mainsail. So it's it's basically almost exactly the same um, in terms of functionality. Now, some people like the layout a little bit better of Fluid because you can do stuff like, you know, hide these. I don't think you can move stuff around. You can't move stuff around. But say you're not running a camera, you can go to your settings disable the camera, and then you don't have a camera on your main screen. Whereas a V0, or uh, sorry, main sale, the, the webcam is kind of always on by default. So if you don't have it connected, you have that little issue there. Um, they both render just fine on your phone. Um, so when you load it up on your phone, let me pull it up here. 192.168. They, uh, they have no problem with formatting, essentially. So if you're running a printer with like a, a cheap tablet in front of it, like a, a Fire tablet or whatever, I know a lot of people um, were using like Fire tablets and whatnot. You can literally just connect to the address and it'll load up and look exactly like this, only formatted for the screen. Oh, 190, go. Wait for that to connect. Okay, it doesn't actually want to connect on my phone right now. But anyways, it connects just fine. I, I think because I already have it running on one computer. My, my router's screwy. Um, oh, you can turn off the webcam and mainstay? Okay. Uh, settings. Interface. Oh, yeah, you can turn off the webcam. Okay, there we go. Refresh. Yeah, it's still showing up. Showing navigate. Oh. Uh, it keeps showing up. Anyways, um, so same thing. You can upload, you know, go to jobs. There's your, you know, upload any files you have. Printer, same as before. You can edit your configuration. So if you're doing any tuning with Clipper, you no longer have to SSH into it or anything like that. Um, oh, I have to remove the URL. Okay. So it is possible to remove. Sorry, my mistake there. Um, you have your settings. Enable jobs on dashboard. So now... You know, you can upload, uh, where's jobs? Yeah, you got you got jobs there, so you can upload from the main thing. You know, it, it, it's a snappier interface, um, but they, they both do, you know, pretty much exactly the same thing. So at this point in their development, it mostly comes down to personal preference. Um, I, it's been brought up that people don't like, like, the Voron branding in Mainsail. Um, in case you didn't notice, that's the old tool head. Like, it's literally placeholder, and you can just go into a file on the SD card and just edit it if you want. So like for the most part, the pictures are just placeholders. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the difference at this point. Now give it some time to develop and who knows what will what'll change. Um, but at this point, it's it's mostly a personal preference between the two. The installation and setup are bo of both are pretty much exactly the same. Um, so. Uh, any chance you could share your thoughts on Duet 2 Wi-Fi versus SKR by plus Raspberry? Uh, basically, if you already have a Duet, you might as well use it. If you don't have a Duet, don't bother buying one. You'll get the same performance for cheaper with a SKR um, and uh, Raspberry Pi combo. In fact, that guy will be converted to Clipper at some point. I'm going to keep the Duet in it. I'm just going to convert it to Clipper. Um, 
Yeah, let me catch up on chat. A bunch of chat there. Yeah, Octoprint. So one of the reasons Octoprint is kind of bulky is the way it works is it's constantly checking your G code because it has so many plugins. So it, it basically it's going over everything with a fine tooth comb, which kind of bogs everything down. Whereas this is a lot more streamlined way of doing it. And this is like a newer or Octoprint stuff's been added to it over the years. This is kind of like, you know, starting with a blank slate. So anyways, um, enough about playing around with everything. Let's kind of, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I, I do like RepRap firmware, but like, for example, configuration, like this is why RepRap is kind of a pain for a V2 because everything is nested macros in macros and scripts to make everything kind of work. It, it's uh it's it's a lot of like yeah as you can see this configuration um, we have files in here from 2018 I got it working and I stopped touching with it and I only I've updated like steps like steps and motor direction when I've done rebuilds of the v2 so it, it's an old it's got it's got some bones on it okay so let's clear all this stuff uh, okay so did I get this right? You can use a Pi Zero with Fluid, no problems. Yes, Fluid and Mainsail, so far. Um, now this is just running along V zeros. A few people have a switch wire. I don't know anyone who has, has converted a V2 to running uh, with the Pi Zero. The problem with the V2 is you have to have two MCUs. So you would need to be able to hook up two MCUs to the Pi Zero. You can do one over UART um, actually, I think you could just use a, a USB hub, but um, nobody's tested it yet to my knowledge. And I I won't full out say it'll work just fine. Like I know it works fine on my V0. I know people have tried it on SwitchWire. Um, but yeah. So Fluid and Mainsail though, they both like same, they have the same footprint in terms of performance. I th I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's uh, let's get this guy set up here because we've been talking for a bit. Uh, let me turn my camera back on. You also have, you know, if your camera's upside down or whatever, um, you have the option to like flip it horizontally or vertically and whatnot. So if you mount your camera upside down for whatever reason, you have the option to, you know, flip it so that, hey, it's right side up and and Right now, I just have it sitting on a, uh, a helping hand. So console. So right now, um, I'm going to be setting up my actual zero position because right now we never set it up. So right now when it goes to zero, it's not actually at zero. Um, I'm like, I got a scale. My X is okay. My X zero is fine, but my Y zero is off, um, which this is something you'll have to do, um, is with your printer, you may have to, when you first get it built, your zero might not line up with the bed. So what you should do is tell it to go to zero and then adjust your offsets and whatnot to make sure that you're actually over the bed. So in my case, uh, my X is okay, but my Y is what, five, six, what is that, six millimeters? Yeah, seven millimeters. It's seven millimeters off the bed. So we'll edit that. So my position for the end stop, now negative seven. Point zero, position max, step distance, I think that's right, homing speed, save, and close. Uh, restart firmware, wait for it to reconnect. Oop, position end stop, must be, oh. And see, this is another good thing. If it has an issue with Clipper and it's like you, you have a setting wrong, this is one of the reasons I really like Clipper over Mainsail. Um, if you have an error, it straight up tells you right now and you can just go in there and edit it. 
So the error we're having is position end stop and stepper Y must be in a position between position min and position max. So, oh, I don't have position min. Position underscore min, negative 7.0. Um, it's good to be able to edit your min and max just in case you have something like a Hall effect sensor um, for an end stop that trips before it actually contacts. So say you have it set for whatever reason to trip at five millimeters from the sensor. This way you can actually travel past it for whatever reason. This comes into play with like Z end stops with if you're running like a, a probe, for example, in this case. So save and close. Uh, restart firmware. There we go. Dashboard. Home all. So G1, X0, Y0, Z0. And yeah, the webcam's lagging. I know that. Well, there we go. And now G1, uh, X, 120, Y, 120, Z, 5. So we can actually get it up off the bed. Okay, so it looks like I'm good on the Y. But the way everything I have set up is I have to move my bed. <laughs> I have to shift my bed. I can't shift my bed due to the motor mount. Um, good enough. I basically have 115 on the Y or on the X. Yeah, I know there's webcam lag. This is a real. This is a three dollar webcam from China. I I don't like the webcam at all. Plus, uh, my Wi-Fi in the house, which everything's connected over Wi-Fi right now, is not really good. The router is like on the other side. Um, I had to run Ethernet cable into this room. So, yeah, Wi-Fi is uh, not the greatest right now in my house. So, yeah, so I only have about a... I, I could shift the whole bed to get the full 120 millimeters um, because I have more travel room going this way. I think I, I think I tested I have about 140 if I really need to. Um, so I'd have to shift the bed, but I'm not going to bother for now. I'll do that off stream. So... X uh, 60, Y 60, Z 10, right? Yeah. So now we are going to do a PID tune. So we did a PID tune last week for the uh, hot end. Now we're going to do one for the bed. And I just want to show you here. Now, I'm going to show you this website here. It's on the Clipper uh, GitHub. But basically, this gives you like stuff you should do when you first set up your printer with Clipper. Um, so you should do stuff like, you know, um, M0112, which is whatever that is. Verify end stops, motor buzz. We skipped a lot of this stuff because, uh, I don't know, YOLO. But uh, yeah, so for a bed, in this case, it's bed target we're gonna shoot for a hundred. Oh wait no I don't have it as bed what do I have what's it called again it's not bed oh it's heater underscore bed and for those that don't know if you need to uh oh you can't do it on here okay a lot of the time on some interfaces, if you want to repeat something, you can just click the bar and you can push up and it'll let you redo the same code. In this case, you cannot. Underscore bed, target. One hundred. Boom. There we go. So 
So that's going to do that. We have our fancy temperature graph here. Uh, is the camera frozen? No, it's a really cheap webcam and it's running over uh, shitty Wi-Fi. So if you plan on uh, printing a bunch of different materials, what is the best temperature to PID your bed to? Um, it really depends. Um, essentially, whatever you're going to use the most is what I would tune your bed to, okay? So if you're going to print with uh, ABS a lot, tune it for 240. I have no problem dropping down to 200 when I'm printing PLA on a printer that I have PID tuned for 240. Um, it'll just, it you might drift a little bit more, but once you at least have a PID tune for a hot end, the further you go away from that temperature wise, you, you'll lose accuracy, but 40 degrees plus minus won't be a massive thing for the most part, for the most part. Uh, who's going tonight? Good night. Uh, mini mill CNCs. <laughs> I, when I was working, um, I could just go into work and use a, uh, a bridge port at work. So that's what I would do for all my machining that I had to do. And this is why you don't go 12 volt kitties. That chart is taking forever. Look at that number go. 68, 68, 69, nice. So yeah, so people were saying somebody was commenting last week. Uh, I believe that the bed or one of the previous bonsai build streams that the bed wouldn't be able to uh, hit uh, ABS temps. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, uh, what nanometer to use for torque on a Dragon High Flow? I believe it's it's three newton meters. Um, I believe it's it's either two and a half or three. Um, I printed the torque wrench off Thingiverse. Um, and they say if you print it in ABS, you have to use a different one. So it's in ABS, it's rated for 1.5 Newton meters. Um, and it works. I've been using it for since I got my mosquito and I haven't had any issues. So. Okay, so let's work on an enclosure. Let me get rid of this... Uh, this guy because PID tuning is one of those things you have to do um, you should do it in the room you shouldn't really run a PID tune with a printer unmonitored um, simply for the fact that if you're doing a PID tune it's usually a brand new printer or new heater or something and you don't want sparky spark smoke happening without you in the room I'm fortunate enough to just have to walk out of my garage to use a milling machine. I would love to build a little mill. The problem is, is most DIY CNC's are routers. And if you're building a router, you're doing maybe aluminum at most. You're not hogging P20 tool, tool steel. And if I'm building a CNC, I want to hog P20 tool steel or equivalent. I want to be able to actually cut steel. Um, so that definitely, that jumps up your price, the ability to DIY it at home. Because you can't just, you know, make a Masumi order and just bolt it all together with some printed parts if you're trying to hog steel. And a 1 8 router going 20,000 ripums taking 2,000 depth of cut isn't hogging steel. So. So what's this printer's nickname going to be? I don't, I think tall, but well, okay, technically they all kind of have a nickname. So V226, just V226, because it's the oldest one I got. I got tall boy. Uh, v naught three is what I call the V zero V naught tree. Uh, switch wire is just switch wire. I don't nickname all my printers. Um, this is just a pile of spare parts in the shape of a printer at the moment. It's a bonsai, but that's what it is. It's a bonsai. Uh, come on, we're at ninety C. So 
while it's doing that, let's build an enclosure, guys. And yes, we are using cardboard. So your best enclosure, uh, if you just bought an Ender 3, is the box the Ender came in. Um, luckily, I built a computer, so I got computer box cases, or computer case boxes, that we are going to use. Cardboard, the gentleman's board, yes. Well, worst comes to worst, you can always use murder plastic, and by burner, murder plastic, I mean garbage bags. Like, honestly, if you wanted to, uh, if you just wanted to, like, you don't, say you don't print a lot of ABS, right? You, you just want to be able to print ABS for the odd time you want to print ABS, but you don't want to go out and build a purpose enclosure for your printer. Um, just get some cheap, like, PVC piping or wooden dowels buy or print some like corner connectors and just get some heavy fabric. And that way you can just kind of put it together when you need it. And when you don't need it, just collapse it down and put it in the garage or in the shed or in a closet or something. Like Core XYs are nicer to enclose other than the, uh, the hat. Uh, I'm talking traditional Core XY. Um, I have some pictures done on this computer. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures on this computer and I don't have a home network. But um, of when I was printing ABS on my V1, and it was legit. Um, I had panels on, or no, I had, yeah, I had corrugated panels on the side just taped on. And then for the hat, I just had rods sticking up in the corners, and then a garbage bag draped over the top. And that was my uh, enclosure. And it's got hot. It got like 40C in there, I think. Which is plenty for ABS. Uh, let's see here. I used the cheap Home Depot tarp and some packing tape for a long time on a few. Honestly, it, people are always like, oh, what if it catches fire? If you're worried about your printer catching fire, do something to prevent your printer from catching fire because I don't care what your printer's in. I don't want anything catching fire in my house. So if I think my printer is going to catch fire in my house, just normally, I'm not going to use it. Uh, what's the price of the bomb for the bonsai? I'm not sure. Um... It's unfortunately, but if you were to source it all out, I guarantee you it would be more than just buying an Ender 3. Um, this guy is pretty much the extrusions are all leftover extrusion from Voron builds. The rods and the bearings are all leftovers from when uh, my V1, back when Tallboy was a V1. Um, same with the lead screws are from when Tallboy was a V1. Uh, some of the motors are from my Monoprice Select Mini that I tore down. Um, the extruder I already had the components for, the hot end I already had the components for, the SKR I already had. So pretty much the only thing I had to buy for this thing um, was the bed, which was a 12 volt, 120 millimeter bed. That cost me, I think 12 or $13 on AliExpress. Um, the flex plate, which was again, another like $20 from Energetic. I had to buy three motors, um, just so my X, Y, and Z motors were all the same. Um, or my X, Y, and the extruder motor were all the same. That was like another $20. And then um, the Pi Zero. That, that's, oh, and a fan. I had to buy one 50-15 fan. So all in, this thing is like, I think maybe 50, 70 bucks I've had to put into it. And the rest was stuff I already had. So yeah, we'll go there. Oh yeah, that's hot.
Yeah, that's one of the reasons why fluid and mainsail are a lot uh, lighter weight and run quicker is they, they're not constantly... Um, it, it runs like a website where like the browser handles all the rendering and whatnot. Where I'm pretty sure with the uh, Octoprint, it's like running like, like a server basically on the Raspberry Pi. I know somebody went through it all and explained it all to me a while ago and I can't remember. And again, I am not, uh, I'm not a coding guy. That scene from Zoolander where they're trying to get the files off the computer and they're acting like monkeys trying to break the old iMac, that's basically me when it comes to code right now. Um, I can follow a guide and I can learn along the way, but if I'm going into something completely blind, I'm kind of kind of lost. So, again, Cadriel, thank you for helping me getting Fluid working again. Oh, and by the way, uh, we did hit our temperature. So this cheapo bed has actual no problem reaching ABS temperatures. So we are good there. people watching me build an enclosure out of cardboard while a printer tunes itself. That's okay. I'll have something printing. As soon as we're done the uh, PID tune here, uh, we're going to go through and I'm going to do a pressure advanced tune, uh, which for those that haven't done pressure advanced with Clipper, there is a, I would say basically built in way of tuning it. Um, I'll go through it. I have a video on my channel on how to do it. But we're going to do it live. Clipper on the host has a socket which Moonraker connects to and then opens an HTTP port. Yes, computer stuff. Oh, we're done. Okay. So, it's done all the stuff it needs to do. So, once it is done doing the PID tune. It'll tell you it's done. And then you just save config. And it saves the config. It restarts your firmware. Boom, you're good to go. So, Clipper, um, PID tuning, or not PID tune, uh, pressure advance. I need to download a little file here. Oh yeah, I forgot. You can't sometimes I, I hate how on GitHub how you can't just download a standard STL. You have to like download the entire um, the entire repository. So anyways, with Clipper, uh, you print this cube here. After inputting these settings, and you print this cube using some certain settings when you slice it, um, so watch Kira, um, and you let it do its print, and then you look at the print, and you'll have a variation in it. When you look at the print, you can see here, this is actually a bad picture, um, but when you look at the print, you'll basically see, right click save as, you can right click save as, right click where? Have I tried the resonance test with the accelerometer? No, no. I unfortunately, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, input shaper, but I've actually yet to put in, input shaper. Um, right click on the big text; it opens. What do you mean the big? Oh. That? No. Oh, okay. I did not know that. So what? You just you click raw, 
and then control S, save it. Square Tower STL. Oh! I did not know that. Okay. So anyways. So we have that downloaded. Um, and you use that file because it has inside and outside corners. Um, and it's the right size. So we got our really small print volume here. Yay. Downloads. Now where did I save it to? Oh, it saves it as a, oh, change the file thing. But it is saved as an STL. And whatever, I, I have the whole thing downloaded here. Extract all. Correct, uh, Llama, you, you can use the tuning tower the, like the way Clipper is, you could tell it to change certain settings over time. So you could do temperature, uh, pressure advance, uh, acceleration. There, there's all kind. Although with acceleration, once you have um, once you have input shaper tuned, that pretty much handles all your acceleration. Uh, so I think it's test. No, where is it? Uh, docs prints. There you go. Square tower. Yay! It actually fits on our print bed. So, um, you need to slice this a certain way for pressure advance to work properly, or at least the tuning for pressure advance to work properly. Um, so what you need to do is you're going to run it at 100 millimeters a second uh, with zero infill, and your layer height should be whatever, it should be 75% of whatever your nozzle is, okay? So since uh, initial layer we could leave at 0.2, but since this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, we're going to run our layer height at 0.2 three millimeters, okay. Um, I don't know, we'll use one wall. We only need one wall. You, top bottom layers don't really matter um, because you're printing it empty. No infill. Uh, let me see here, oh, just checking. Yeah, the input shaper, I would love to do a video on. I don't have an accelerometer on hand, unfortunately. Um, I know, I'm pretty sure you could do it without an accelerometer as well, but the accelerometer is kind of cool, just the way it does that. Um, so we are printing walls at 100 millimeters a second. Uh, enable retraction, sure. Enable print cooling. Oh, uh, one setting I am going to turn on here. Uh, where is it? Start. No. no, where is it? I gotta turn it on. I think it's in shell. Z, Z seam position. Okay, so we're turning Z seam on so that we can make the Z seam in one location. This way we're not looking at because sometimes you know depending on how your printer's tuned the start stop position causes a defect so we are going to force it to be in one location okay so in this case we're going to specify um let's see here is that same position x y whatever okay so the back so in this case the seam will always be at the back so we know when we look at our print uh, looking for um, the defect we will be looking for for acceleration testing, we'll know that the seam isn't interfering with it. So, so slice it. And actually, because it's going to be printed with ABS, uh, let me turn off print cooling altogether. And we are going to print with a brim. Don't ever be afraid to print with a brim was ABS, okay? Or any plastic, really. If, if you're worried about your print warping, a brim comes off very easily. Um, use it. Like, it, using it, there's no shame in using a brim, okay? So that is our cube there, okay? Nothing fancy to it. Save to file. Documents, square tower, okay? 
and we're going to upload it. Uh, and there we go. Uh, I'm sort of confused on how Clipper works. Does it replace the firmware or does it work with your actual firmware that is on the board of the printer you are trying to get it to work with? It completely replaces it. Clipper is the firmware, okay? Now you still, there is still firmware running on the board, but it's basically telling the board how to listen to the Raspberry Pi essentially. Um, so it basically splits up the commands and the processing so that now the Raspberry Pi is doing all the thinking and computing for motion, um, for basically everything. And all it's doing is sending straight up commands to the MCU and the MCU is telling your stepper motors and the fans and everything what to do. So instead of having to think about everything and do everything, it's now offloading the thinking about everything part to the Raspberry Pi, which has a much better processor, so it can do a lot more. Uh, oh yeah, temperatures, PLA. Thank you for pointing that out. We do not want to be printing at PLA temps. So we are gonna print with a 100 degree bed at 240. Uh, printing temperature, initial layer, initial printing temperature. There. So our first layer, we're going to go down a little bit hotter. I usually go hot for the first layer, five to ten degrees Celsius. Um, so there we go. So slice, let's save that. Remove. Upload, square tower. Okay, so now we are going to have to, uh, I got some plastic in there I gotta get out. Because right now I still have some PLA in there. So we're gonna heat up our hot end. And while that's doing that, I gotta set up some Yes. So I'm going to be cheating, but we will be using eSun ABS Plus. eSun ABS Plus is my go to for black plastic simply for the fact I live in Canada and I can't get stuff like KVP or the other good shit. Um, and a lot of the good stuff here is quite expensive, unfortunately. Whereas this stuff I can get in bulk for about $25 a case. So eSun ABS Plus is basically cheating for ABS. Uh, it's very low warp. Um, it's not as stiff as regular ABS. However, it's within, it's not an issue for printed parts. Um, Raymond, don't swear. I have to manually approve that because you said the S word. So anyways, um, it's just a really good plastic. So eSun ABS Plus is probably the easiest plastic for ABS to print. So, going to print and I'm going to build the enclosure around the printer as it's printing because uh, we're cool like that. Dang it, come on. New spool. I hate new spools because they always want to come undone. Dang it. Don't. Can you give us a list? <laughs> Unfortunately, like in Canada, shipping stuff that's heavy is stupid expensive. And especially shipping stuff across the border that's heavy. Um, I was all gonna be in for, you know, so I was gonna get when, uh, for those that don't know, uh, when Midwest Rep Rap Fest was still on, uh, the Voron guys, we were gonna have a booth. We we're actually gonna have two booths. 
we're gonna be cool like that. And uh, I was planning, or not planning, I was toying with the idea of ordering a case of uh, filament of KVP. Come on. Dang it. Uh, ordering a case of KVP and picking it up while I was down there. Um, good thing I did it because uh, Rona shut down the border and I would have been stuck not able to get my uh, plastic. I might have jammed up my hot end here. Or not jammed it. Um, shoot. Let's see. Yep. Come on. There we go. Okay. A little bit of PLA was still stuck in there. Oh, shoot. That's, uh, that all winded up. Wound up. I hate new spools of filament. They are so temperamental. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was going to buy a case of KVP, but it would have been stuck over the border because uh, that all got kiboshed. But yeah, so ESAN ABS Plus is extremely forgiving, and it's literally my recommended, hey, I've never printed ABS before. Um, what should I use? Go with ESUN ABS Plus and then go from there. Especially if your printer isn't uh, fully enclosed or anything like that. Okay. So let's try extruding 40 millimeters of plastic. There we go. Okay. So let's heat our bed up. Should have let that go okay so we got our plastic so we're extruded there there's the tweezers uh, Atomic's also good. There, there's Here's the thing with plastics. It really depends on the colors you're getting. The batch can affect it. Um, a lot of people like KVP. A lot of people like a, a Atomic. Uh, Paramount, I think, is another good one. Um, Hatchbox is okay. Um, it, it's There's a lot of good plastic. The thing is with ABS, especially ABS, just don't go buy the cheapest stuff. Go buy some stuff that people say are good or have tried before. Uh, I think I want Nero's apron for Christmas. Um, I don't have a link to it, but go watch any of Adam Savage's videos uh, for Tested on YouTube. Um, he has a link to this apron. Um, that's where I got it. Did you up the Z uh, motor current from the last stream? Yes, I did. Um, let me see here. Edit. I think I bumped it up to 6 and I turned off... Uh, Stealth Chop. Yeah, I bumped it up to six and I turned off the Stealth Chop, so it's running Spread Cycle. I just wanted to, I didn't want to make sure, or I wanted to make sure I didn't have any uh, skipping issues. Okay, so anyways, um, we got our plastic loaded. So now, for pressure advance, before we run the cube, because if I were to just run the cube right now, it would run the cube right now. But we're going to want to send some commands to it. Um, so this first one here, set velocity, limit, square, corner velocity, one, acceleration, 500. This locks our starting acceleration, okay? So we're gonna send that command, boom, okay? There, it takes that command. Now, this command right here uh, makes the nozzle travel slow through the corners to emphasize, em emphasize the effects of extruder pressure. Then, for, uh, then this part here, you run either one of these two. 
If you're running a direct drive extruder or direct feed, um, you use this setting, which changes it by a factor of 0 0.005 per interval. If you're running Bowden, you want 0 0.020. The reason for that is if you run it with the one for, it, it's basically, you're gonna see more variance or more, you're gonna need more pressure advance with Bowden. So you wanna be doing bigger jumps between the intervals. Otherwise, you're just going to have to print forever before you see any difference, okay? Um, like, you could be the difference between using, like, 0.02 versus 1. It depends on how long your Bowden is. So you send either one of these two, depending if you're using Bowden or direct feed. This is a direct feed extruder, okay? And then, at that point, now we run our print. So jobs, square tower. Uh, KVP, yes, KVP colors are really good too. Like they have some really good color. There, there's a lot of good filament. Remember, none of these companies, or actually I think some of them do, but the vast majority of companies don't actually make their plastic. They're buying resin from another company and just extruding it into a filament form. Because ABS normally comes in pellets. Let's turn the webcam on so you can watch my leggy ass webcam. MPEG streamer over crappy Wi-Fi. may look super ghetto what I am doing here I kid you not something as simple as this actually affects it like this looks like the most jank setup you can imagine and it is do not get me wrong this is horribly jank okay but this is preventing drafts and drafts are horrible for ABS so if you could do nothing else put your printer in a closet okay if you're trying to print ABS and you have a big open room, plug the vents, okay? Plug your vents, close the door, don't be in the room when it's printing simply because you moving around or just sit there and play a video game or something. You want to prevent drafts, okay? Because drafts are bad. And the webcam is not working, whatever. Um, so yeah, you want to do everything you can to basically keep the heat in, okay? So build a little igloo if you need to. Now, we're just printing something in 20 minutes here that's basically hollow. I'm not printing an hour of a part, so I'm not too worried about warp, and I'm printing with a brim. So there's not a lot of mass there to pull up. Because as plastic warps, the more plastic you have, so if you're printing a thick, heavy piece of uh, plastic, and it warps, it'll warp more than something that's hollow in one wall because as it warps, it doesn't have as much force to pull it off the bed. It's more likely the force of the bed will just keep it down. We're at 101, so it's the bed actually heats up relatively quick. It's actually not that bad, actually. Now, I will build a proper enclosure for this at a later date. And by proper, I mean I'm probably going to try and do something to show off a cheap enclosure that works decently. Um, there's all kinds. Honestly, cardboard works really good. I know a lot of people don't like cardboard um, simply because, you know, it does catch fire if it catches fire. Oh shit.
There we go. You guys failed me. I told you to remind me. I told you. I trusted you. I trusted you guys. Like, I feel so let down now. So let down. That's okay, it wasn't actually heating up the, now it's heating up the hot end. Ah, I trusted you. What happened? Uh, remember at the very beginning of the stream when I said, hey guys, I'm gonna turn the fan off or unplug the fan so you don't have to listen to the really loud annoying part fan um, for the whole stream. Um, and I said, hey guys, make sure you remind me before I actually go to print anything to uh, plug the fan back in. You didn't remind me. I made the mistake trusting you. I have 80 people. Okay, I have 80 people watching. Thank you, guys. Um, I have 80 people watching, and none of you... Who, who reminded me? Who was that? Stefan. Stefan Cecil. Thank you, man. Cecil. Cecil? Cecil. Thank you. 81. Woo! 15 likes. Yes, everyone hit like for uh, reminding me to turn the fan back on. That is your penance. Hey, we're uh, we're at temperature. I knocked my camera over. You want a benchy? I got a bunch of them. Okay, so. Those motors really rumble. I might have retracted too much at the beginning. Come on, push plastic. There we go, okay, it's pushing plastic. step up a little bit. So my Z offset's a little wonky still. So it's really pushing this into the bed, but whatever. Oh well, I can live with it. Got a threaded insert stuck on a screw which got ripped out of a part. Oof. I broke my cutters trying to break the bolt. Ooh, yeah, don't break, don't use cutters on the bolt. Uh, dislike for no fans plugged in. <laughs> Technically, the part fans plugged in and working fine. It's just not being used right now. Um, Yeah, it's probably the barrel. It's probably the motors, and it's probably the way I have them uh, hooked up in parallel, um, because this board didn't have a hookup for hooking them up, like two Z motors. So I just ran them in parallel. So it's probably that. Um, it's not the drivers. These are TMC twenty two oh nines. So it's definitely not the drivers. It's gonna take longer to print this. Uh, First layer than any other layer. Yeah. 
See, unfortunately, because I have the flex plate, I can't go in there and turn down the one, uh, the one corner that I need to drop a little bit. Oh well. Uh, Brian B. Yes, I did crank it up. Originally, it was set for, I think, 0.4 amps. I bumped it up to 0.6. I don't know what the spec is for these motors, unfortunately, so I can't just give her. Um, they are still dead cold, though, so I probably will bump them up even more after this. Um a Benchy storage box. Yes, for those just joining in, uh, we are doing the Clipper Pressure Advanced Calibration Print in ABS because we're going to be printing ABS. We're on Benchy box when... <laughs> Really hate the fan on this. Okay, so while this is running, this is going to take a while, unfortunately. There's really not much I can do about that. Anyone got any questions, printer questions, or anything like that? They want me to go over, look at anything? Oh, yeah, it's really squished down. So, yeah. Um, I really roughly leveled the bed last time, um, last week, and I should have probably gone through and re-leveled the bed properly uh, before I do in this, but uh, last time we only printed an itty bitty benchy, so we're obviously, uh, this corner is definitely way too high. Although I do have an inductive probe on here, I could set up a bed mesh, but uh, with the motors being as, er, as they are right now, um, I don't want to be doing a constant bed mesh on stream. So, yeah. Why are 3D printers fun? Because they are fun. Uh, switch wire, yes, as Core X said. Um, so it, it's really um, the simplest way of thinking of the of the gantry assembly on the switch wire is to look at a Core X Y and just flip it vertical. So a Core X Y gantry, flip it vertical. That is switch wire. And then we, uh, I just Googled, it's 0.55 amp per motor, so you're running both, you got a fair bit of hearing. I suppose you, uh, yeah, so if it's running in parallel, you need to double that. So if they're 0.55 amp motors, I should be running them at like, I should be feeding at one amp. Because then each motor would get half that. Um, but yeah, so Core XY, or Core XZ, uh, normally the gantry would just come plummeting down if you turned off the printer. Um, or the motors would constantly be working to keep it up. So we actually have a uh, a key back, it's called. It's basically a glorified, it is actually just a, a key retainer, retractable key retainer, but it holds like 20 ounces, and that's enough to basically act as a counterweight. Uh, I have an orbiter extruder that I want to adapt for to my Prusa or to my Cossel Linear Plus, other than the mount, which I can create in Fusion, with the VRF from the... Uh, Okay, so yes, your, your, your voltage depends on the stepper motor, okay? Um, so yes, if it's, you know, if you're swapping out the motor, now if it's a motor you're currently using and you were to put it in another extruder body, so say I had like, say I had, a, you know, I have a, a crappy Creality Ender 3 extruder, right? The extruders that come on, on Creality printers are Garbo. So say I took that motor out and I built uh, a, a Voron M4 extruder, and I put the motor in here, and I plugged it back into my printer, I would change my steps per millimeter, but it should be good to go. Now, if you put a new motor in, yes, you should have to adjust your, your reference current, your V-Ref, uh, to the new motor, and tune from there. If it's getting too hot, and it's, and it's uh, skipping steps, you gotta drop it, um, or if it's stone cold and you're skipping steps, you gotta up it, so.
So yeah, if, if it's if it's a brand new extruder um, with a brand new motor, you probably will have to change the V-Ref unless it happens to be exactly what the V-Ref is of the current motor. Yeah, the key holder was, is uh, that the Russian cat food with that. Um, that that was him. But it, like, if you go back to one of my uh, V2, I think it was, or maybe, yeah, I think it was the V2 build. I, I was playing with it on stream before Switchwire was announced. So I, I was sitting there playing with it because it was like the first part of my Switchwire that showed up. I'm using my Costal to print Voron parts now. Great printer. I've never played with a Delta. Part of me wants a Delta simply for the fact that it's a Delta. They're fun to watch, but I have zero use for it. I have zero use for this thing. The only reason this guy exists is because I'm going to use it for videos. Um, I built a switch wire just so I would have something to play for dual extrusion with Y splitter. That's pretty much it. Okay, so right now it's actually doing the part of the print uh, where it's printing the walls. And this is what we're going to use to find our, our optimal pressure advance setting. And so since it's starting and stopping each layer at the back there, we're going to be wanting to look at these front two corners when we make our uh, decision. Is there a source for the integrated lead screw stepper for the V0? I read that the ones that were available were a custom order. Uh, yes, they are, unfortunately. It's because it's like a pretty much a pancake stepper with a lead screw. Nobody made those before they were requested. So yeah, they are pretty much a custom thing. Um, I think LDO has them. Uh, anyone have orbiters? Why aren't they more popular? Um, so the orbiter, I think that's the original design off Thingiverse. Uh, the Galileo is based upon that. And, I, and it's also made on the request of the guy. Um, so it's like all kosher and whatnot with licensing. Um, but it, it's not super common because you kind of need more um, custom parts. Um, I know a lot of people get like MJF parts or whatnot. So it, it's a lot finicker or it's not as simple to do at home. Like a Mobius 4, you could easily print all the parts you need to build this extruder. Um, on any printer that can print ABS decently. Um, yeah, you, you do need some uh, BMG gears and some belting and whatnot, but this is pretty much common printer parts in here. Whereas the Orbiter, because it's got the planetary gear, you need the, the funky helical gears in there, and printing those isn't as easy to get consistent results than purchasing MJF, so you have to purchase another item. So. That and it's new. It's not. It's it's a new design, right? New stuff always takes time to catch on. Like look how long. Like I think my my V1 serial, or like look how long it took Voron before it exploded. Like this year it just went nuts. We're up to like over 700 V2s. But like two years ago there was like I built mine. I got mine serialed in June, and it's V226. V2 one was like January. So January to like June, there was only like 26 of these built. Now that's like that much every like couple of weeks. Yeah, Blue Rolls is licensed to sell the parts or at least give them permission or whatever. See, it's printing ABS. I'm in the room. I'm not dying. I don't even smell it. Five G cancels out the ABS fumes. Uh, I wish I had five G. Um, I get LTE in my basement here. Like, but no. Also, if you are like, 
when it comes to ABS fumes, Eastern ABS Plus is actually pretty uh, not smelly. Like it, it's a pretty decent in terms of smell. Hackaday cover. Yeah, I, I did see the uh, the article on Hackaday. Um, I did take a glance at it. I kind of want to put a Galileo in one of my borons. The problem is I I um, I I don't know. I kind of want to. I just don't have the time right now. I just stab myself with my uh, tweezers. Great. Like right now, I'm still playing with the uh, the high flow fetus. Uh, I got some transparent filament. I'm hoping I have enough. I don't know if I have enough. I'm hoping I have enough. Um, I'm gonna do a big spiral Christmas tree. Hopefully, I have enough filament in there. Mark two. Uh, it says I got 50 meters, so 150 grams. So hopefully I got enough. I used to print ABS with really bad fumes, but now when I print ABS, I smell boron. <laughs> got to run looking real good, Nero. I enjoy the rest. I will. Don't forget the rest of the stream is on video on demand. Um, like I keep it up on my YouTube channel. The chat does show up. Um, it does show up. It just takes a while for YouTube to process it. Usually a few hours. Uh, yeah, Raymond, um, I, I've seen the video of pushing stupid fast with the Galileo. Problem is, I haven't been able to outrun a, uh, a traditional afterburner set. Oh. Oh, we got warp. We are warping already. Gosh darn it. Yeah, we lost the corner. Yep, it's falling apart on us, guys. So what did I do wrong? Let's see. It's the walls. You gotta cancel the print. Cancel print. So we have lost it. Okay, I gotta change my cancel print macro for one. Because right now the default cancel print macro decides to uh, send negative china it into the bed. So let's see here. Instead of waiting it to cool, hold it down with your finger. No, we're getting like really hardcore layer separation. Um, and it was really bad layer or bed adhesion as well. So I know I gotta drop this corner. So let me drop this corner because that corner was way too high. And we were getting uh So actually, it wasn't, yeah, it failed due to walls. Doing uh, one wall, it just came apart. So I'm gonna re-slice it. I'm gonna keep the bed hot. It mushed into the bed. Uh, I've been using Clipper for about one year and it's been uphill on understanding all it can do. Does anyone make YouTube videos explaining all you can configure for it? Um, I only have, on, on my channel, I only have like basic installation videos at this time. Um, but there is a crap ton of settings in Clipper you can adjust. If you go to their GitHub, um, the Clipper GitHub, it has 
Um, an example config. Oh, it actually has a few example configs, but it has basically menu section, uh, example section. You can go through and basically it'll tell you all the settings that you can add to your config and what it can do to adjust. Are supports with ABS prints incompatible? They seldom come off as easily as PLA, if at all. Um, you, as long as your settings are right, it comes off fine. Um, if you go to my Twitter at Nero or at 3DP Nero because it's backwards on Twitter because that's what Twitter decided to do. Um, I have a video of pulling off supports when I was printing my Iron Man helmet, and those came off pretty good. Okay, let me fix this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-slice it. And I'm going to slice it uh, with three walls this time. I think that's what our issue was, is we didn't have enough walls. And without enough walls, um, with it being unenclosed ABS, uh, it just kind of went to crap and fell apart. I got multiple flex plates if I need to. Okay. So, we're going to try three walls now. Now, theoretically, it doesn't matter how many walls you have. Um, it's just going to increase the print time. But we're going to try with three walls. And then, I believe our Z offset, we are going to have to adjust that there. Because we were smushing that down a little too much. The printer, jobs. Square tower, remove, upload, square tower. Um, I don't know if I need to re-put these in. I'm pretty sure I don't need to, but I'm just doing it again just to make sure. Um, I'm pretty sure you do I don't have to, but I am. Okay. Print. And now we're doing it again. Change the end macro. Uh, it wasn't the end macro. It was the cancel print macro. I gotta. I've already started the print. Yeah, the the I'm not I've never been to the Clipper Discord, but it's unofficial and the main creator of Clipper doesn't go there. Take that as you will. Uh Ryan, more walls would be more tension. Yes, but it actually it didn't come off the bed. It actually stuck to the bed a little too good. Um it was the walls themselves just started falling apart. Because again, remember I'm printing at 0.75 or 75% of the layer height or of the nozzle diameter, so the walls aren't really getting smushed together that much either. So, we're going to try again. See how it goes.
Just waiting for everything to heat up. I never print ABS. I usually go with ASA. It doesn't smell. It's the exterior. For, oh, okay. Uh, so my whole ASA versus ABS, print what you like. ASA, though, for the most part, is ABS formulated for UV resistance. It's like 99%, 98% the same thing. Um, just slightly different chemical composition. Yay, science. But uh, my theory on why a lot of people have better luck with ASA, and I've said this before, is simply because it's not as common in filament. You're more likely to find better, higher quality ASA than melted down Barbie doll ABS from China. So, yes, join the Voron Discord. Um, although it's mostly centric to Voron, so if you go in there having constant questions about your Creality Ender 3, you may not take it well, but it is, you know, a Voron centric 3D printer Discord. But great community there. We're like over 9,000 people now. Um, you want to build a Voron, go there. So, yes. Uh, so what did you change in the slicer to try to get the layers to stick together? I increased the wall count. Um, did I already throw it up? Yeah. So like, like as you can see, it just fell apart super simply. And I'm thinking just because there's no, there's no meat to these walls. Uh, wait, my probe started to shine red. Did my enclosure melt it? Um, it, if it's a, um, a PL08, it, it, it turns red next to metal. But that is just what it does. That's it's activating. So yeah, I don't have a Discord. I'm nowhere near this. This channel is nowhere near that popular. So, if you need to hit me up, I'm on there. I also have a Twitter, at uh, 3DP Nero. Join my Twitter, su or subscribe to my Twitter, or whatever the, the tweet at me, whatever the Twitter lingo is. I don't, I've only been on Twitter for like a month now. Um, if for some reason you're not subscribed to the channel, I'm assuming all 84 of you are right now, but if you're not, subscribe, ring that bell, leave a comment, hit like, all that jazz. Twitter follow. Yes, follow. Uh, I don't... Okay, uh, question about Clipper. If I install it on my pot 4, 4 gigabyte and run it with... Mark, uh, okay, um, so, uh, DeSocio. Um, yes, you have to flash firmware for Clipper onto your MCU. So onto the INZ or whatever controller board your Prusa is running, you will have to flash firmware onto that to run Clipper. And it's basically, it's very little firmware. It's basically just enough to, so that the board can understand what's coming from the Pi, but you are flashing firmware onto the MCU. Um, so unfortunately, um, I know on like the Prusa Mini to flash custom firmware, you have to hack or cut off something on, on, the, on the MCU board. So you void your warranty doing that, which what the hell Prusa. But um, now on a Raspberry Pi though, you can, you know, just copy the image. So like I have, like this guy, the, I still have the SD card from this guy when it was running main sale. And I can literally just pull the SD card out, put the main sale SD card in, and this thing would boot up into main sale instead of fluid. Um, but in that regard, yeah. So even switching between Octoprint and main sale, if, you want it, if you're running Octoprint with Clipper and you want it to try out main sale, uh, if you have a spare SD card, you can set up everything on that SD card for main sale. And if you don't like it, you can just throw the Octoprint SD card back in and continue on as is because your your configuration doesn't change between the two. Uh, Chris Engel, $5. Thanks. Thank you. As always, anyone who donates to the stream, um, it goes to helping equipment for the stream, uh, helping support this endeavor. Um, I thank you all for it. It's paid for this com camera, the computer that we're using. Uh, some random knickknacks for videos and whatnot. So I thank you for any donations that anyone gives. So thank you, Chris. Oh. Ooh, actually, what do we have here? What do we have here? MCU shutdown. Timer too close. This is generally indicative of an intermittent communication error. Ah. From a restart. 
Let me do a full reboot. I've had this happen before. It's completely random. Usually if I just reboot it, it goes back to normal. MCU shut down. Ugh. Yeah, if your printer, if the the LED on your on your probe is lighting up and turning off just from heat, um, usually that's not a. Uh, uh, it's running a Pi Zero, which usually isn't an issue. But that's why we still recommend if you already have like a Pi Three or a Pi Four, stick with that, simply because uh, Pi Zero is still kind of on the edge. I'm actually, I'm going to disable webcam just to be sure here. So enable, disable. Just in case that's causing it. it might be the resolution's too high. There we go. Okay, so we're back. Input command. Blah, blah, blah. Input command. Blah, blah, blah. Print jobs, square tower, print. Try that again. Yeah, the Pi Zero does have a problem with bandwidth. That's, again, another reason why it's still... Yes, it, main sale and fluid run. They do run on a Pi Zero, but it's still newish. So I, I disabled the webcam there, hoping that uh, kind of helps a little bit. You know what? In fact, I'm just going to unplug it completely. Oh well, try it again. We're all learning. That's the thing with these tuning streams. There's really only so much you can do when a printer's just heating up. I do just kind of start working on this guy though. got to sand it all, fill it in, bondo it and all. Oh, that's probably going to be really loud. On so, speaking of mics, um, currently right now my setup, I have a boom mic sitting up there. And I've been kind of looking into what I can do to try and get a better audio solution. Because uh, right now, the boom mic works. The problem is it picks up the whole room. And as we know, annoying fan is annoying. So what is, is it lav mics, wireless lav mics? Is that what seems to be, that would probably be the best solution, right? Transitioning to a wireless lav mic, because then it would be on me and it would only be mostly picking up my voice. I know that's what most people use for streaming, or at least in this kind of setup for streaming. Boom mic works if I was sitting at a computer, but I'm not sitting at a computer. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot of sanding. Ugh. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what to do to avoid my pro from triggering from heat? My heater block has thick silicone sock and it isn't touching it. The silicone shouldn't do it. It those like PLO8 probes and inductive probes they trigger off metal. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. Let me pull up uh, H top there. So like you can encase the whole probe in silicone. That won't affect it. So with the camera off, by the way, um, HTOP, we're using like 12% CPU. So what I'm probably gonna do is actually take that uh, camera, and I'm gonna probably drop it down to like 480p in like five frames per second. Because honestly, you're not, I, I'm not recording any of my prints. I just need to make sure it's not falling off the bed. That's honestly what I use my cameras for, is hey, is it actually not, you know, making spaghetti? If not, then I'm fine. Um, you could bring up a, uh, yeah, cork spacer. I have um, this stuff. Like, it's got the adhesive backing. And I was thinking of putting this under the bed. Uh, the problem is I really actually 
don't have that much room under there. Like I could just jam some in and I probably will just jam some in there just to kind of insulate the bed a little bit better. But uh, I'll get to that later. Come on, hit 105. Fiberglass insulation is good for that. Yeah, there's, um, I'm trying to remember, yeah. Like, this is the bed on my Monoprice Select Mini, or was the bed. Oh my god, this thing's tiny. But yeah, this just had pretty much the same thing, just aluminum foam, whatever, just glued to the bottom. But this bed could barely hit 70. Yeah, this bed was garbo. Absolutely garbo. It's like not even an eight inch thick aluminum. It's like, where is it? So the bed on this guy is one eighth inch. This bed on the Monoprice Select Mini, 1.5 mil. 60, 68 thou. So the, the Monoprice Select Mini comes with a bed that's half as thick as a, a $12 bed. Ugh. And the PCB is like built into the bed. Yeah, it's a PCB bed with an aluminum like surface on it or something. I don't know. This is, that is a Garbo bed. That's one of the reasons I didn't rebuild my Monoprice Select Mini. Because that was the original plan. The original plan, instead of building this guy, was I was basically just going to rebuild a Monoprice Select Mini upgrade it, do a few upgrades on it, and then use that for the video for trying to get like, you know, intro to ABS. Uh, the problem is like, it just doesn't hit the temperatures. Like the, I would have to replace the bed. I'd have to replace the controller on it because the controller was really crappy. Um, and like, I'd have to do a so much work to it and you really can't do a lot of modifications to it because of the way it's built. Um, I just said, screw it built this guy plus it doesn't help the rods were all warped shit or worn out sees bearings cutting trenches okay we're almost ready to print here Oh, I forgot to up the Z motor current again. Oh well. The spool holder is working really well. Regarding the MCU timeout, I got rid of it by changing the MCU baud rate. You have to update firmware on Bayboard as well as config fire. Yeah, I think it's like 2,500 or uh, 250,000 baud or whatever the default is. But right now we're printing and we're at. I think it jumped up to 15% there, load, 17% load. So yeah, so if this was, oh, oh hey, good, our, uh, our first layer is actually proper now. Eh, it's still a little too low, but it's good enough. Um, yeah, 11.5200, yeah. I, I might try that, Raymond, if it turns out it's just the webcam issue. Um, which I, I think it probably is just the webcam issue. Um, I might, I, again, this guy isn't gonna be, this isn't gonna be a workhorse printer. This printer is strictly pretty much for demonstration purposes of printing, uh, of learning stuff. So it really only has one job. I'm not gonna be printing full, you know, plates of Voron parts on it. doing that since you got an overhead view I'm gonna do that you know heat rises this will kind of keep the uh... Uh, what build surface yes this is PEI the little black specks you see are um, 
ABS that kind of got a little too close to the bed. But yes, that's a PEI bed. It's a flex plate. Um, Energetic makes them. You can get Wham Bam, um, Alta Stick. There's a bunch of different companies. This is the stuff I use on uh, right now. So this one only has the sticker. So it only has, it's only uh, spring steel with a sticker. This is the bed off my V0. It also has a textured size. I actually, I don't like the textured size as much. I find I don't get as good stick. So. But it makes it really good on like small printers such as this guy. Um, Cause then if you know, you're not sitting there trying to smash off a print with your spatula off a, a small printer. And then it's also really good on big printers because you can print, you know, a whole bed of stuff and just go blah and all your parts just pop off. So, uh, estimated print time at yeah, 49 minutes. Uh, I should do a side-by-side -side print with that printer between Marlin. I would have to install Marlin on it, and I haven't touched Marlin in like over two years. Uh, what magnet are you using on the V2? Uh, they're, they're both energetic. It's the energetic uh, spring steel and magnet. So, But yeah, I, I, I don't want to go back to Marlin and having to compile to flash stuff constantly. Like... This guy, if I, if I wanted to literally tell this printer, oh hey, I just put an extra... Uh, 100 meters on the bed or 100 millimeters on the bed. I literally just load it up change uh, 120 here to 220 Hit save which would pop up here. I would hit save Hit the the restart button and it's done. I've updated my firmware settings. I want to add a probe I want to do anything. It's literally just a quick setting and save. I don't want to go back to having to recompile firmware Yes, the firmware, like all your settings are loaded on, it's just a config file. It's kind of like uh, Duet Web Control, it's the same thing, right? So, uh, let me pull it up here, because I have it online. But Duet Web Control is the same thing, where it's, it's literally just a file you're editing. So, right here, this is my V226 here. And, uh, you know, if I want to change anything, I just go to the config file and, and oh, hey, I, I need to change my bed thermistor. I just changed it. I would just edit this file right here. Just type in new thermistor type, blah, 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 blah. Hit save. Uh, yes, I don't want to change. Um, and then just restart the printer, like restart start the firmware, and boom, it's done. So, just so much nicer to work with. Okay, so that corner right there, I got to print up. Clipper is more of a modern firmware for a printer. Like, Marlin works. Don't get me wrong. Marlin works. It's just, it's, it's old. Will Fluid talk to Marlin? No. Fluid and mainsail are Clipper only. They only work with Clipper. If, if you want a, a web interface for Marlin, you pretty much have to go with Octoprint. Like, you, you have to go with Octoprint. Mark Red. Uh, it's one thing I don't miss, all these bloody pop-ups. But let's just see here. Oh, Bring up Putty here. Let me connect up Tallboy.
Yeah, so this is a quad core. It's using two, two, and it's just doing nothing. But I don't know. I, after going to something new like this, it's just so. Especially for somebody like me who doesn't use plugins, I, I just use my printer to print. Um, it's just so much smoother and easier to work with. I find. So, back to printing. Uh, with the Prusa Mark III's INC, yes. Basically, anything will get more, you'll get more performance out of a printer in terms of being able to run more steps per uh, second with, uh, with Clipper. You also, Clipper, apparent, like people say the Clipper motion, uh, the way Clipper does motion, um, is better. And also, you have stuff like Pressure Advance. You also have the Input Shaper, which allows you to run stupid 5K acceleration all day, every day, and it automatically compensates for ringing. So you can run super high accelerations without issue. Um, but yeah. Yeah, like I, right now I have, um, I don't have mainsail up right now. I turned that printer off because I, I, I don't have enough room to run all these printers at once normally. Have you used Duet Web Control 2? No. Um, again, this is my Duet, like this is my V2. And I have uh, config files from 2018 in here still. Okay. Like, these are files from the middle of 2018. I haven't updated the firmware on that printer since then, roughly. Um, I've done a few configuration changes, obviously, for, like, the different versions of Voron that it's been. But it's in a very... It ain't broke. I ain't touching with it. I ain't messing with it. Um, yeah. So another reason I might be having issues um, with warping is with that fan running, and this is another thing, it's actually blowing a lot of air down. Um, I'm gonna have to probably get some tape, and I have some. Uh, where did I put it? I'm gonna have to find it. I have electrical, or not. Uh, uh, of course I can't find it now. Yeah, my son probably has it somewhere. I have a uh, like aluminum tape. Captain tape will always any high tape temp or high temp tape will work. But if you're printing ABS, you want no air movement on it. So if your part fan has a lot of extra or correction, if your your heater fan has a lot of bleed, which what I mean is it it when it pushes air to cool the, the hot end, it pushes air down or whatever. You want to try and stop that. So something like Captain tape. Um, reprinting or redesigning the hot end assembly itself so it doesn't. This design has a lot of air pushing down. Um, so that might be causing some of my issue here. So. Also, my flow settings could be incorrect. There, there, there's a bunch of different features or reasons. We're just going to let it run. Uh, my printer is sitting on a half inch steel plate. Yeah, that's enough to... Uh, did I just call it Captain Tape? Yeah, it's Captain Tape. Yar. Yeah, you can run RepRap firmware now on SKRs. I just know some people that tried to do some custom code for RepRap firmware back in the day when uh, V2 was new, 
and uh, it's kind of a, a nightmare in terms of getting some stuff uh, implemented in the way it compiles and whatnot. Where Clipper, it's a lot easier to, especially like if you go to the, just to put it in perspective, um, like why the Voron guys like Clipper. Um, let me see here. How do I pull it up? Yeah. So if you go to the Clipper Discord, or uh, Discord, the Clipper GitHub, you go to contributors. So you got Kevin, he's the guy who created Clipper. And then you got ArcSign, uh, that's a Voron guy. Uh, McMatrix, uh, F.H. Eelman, F. Heelman, Voron guy. Bessie Fu, uh, where else? I know there's more. I know uh, three commits and whatnot. But yeah, if you look at like the top committers, of the top five, two of them are Voron guys. Arc Science put 135 commits into here, so that's first 32. So there's been a lot of Voron work for Clipper, or Clipper work for Vorons that have taken place. Ooh, what was that? What popped up? Estimated time. Oh, there you go. You got pop-ups. Duration and total. Is, is, is you... Um, oh, Cadriel left. Top three. Oh, yeah. Fessifu. Right? Yeah. Fessifu is a boring guy. Sounds familiar. Um, is the total time like total uptime? I don't think that's total uptime. Oh, that's estimated. Okay, so it's 20 minutes of 58 minute print. Use filament, the file. There's your uh, baby stepping if you need to baby step. What other settings are there here? Enable jobs on dashboard. Oh yeah, I gotta turn that on. So yeah, we got that there. Save. Uh, you can change your default settings. Dark theme. Oh my god. No, no, no. Go back to dark. There we go. Uh, does fluid show thumbnails? I don't know. Um, yeah, I know you have to slice with uh, like Prusa Slicer, I think, or Super Slicer to get thumbnails. Um, I use Kira, so. <laughs> Flashbang, my eyes. Anyone know why ABS Plus would let the wall shrink inwards, but the bed adhesion holds perfect and the top finish is good? My ambient temp is usually 35C. Uh, Terrence, are you talking like if you're printing a cube? Like if you're, if you're printing just a cube and you measure it the inside, like the, the middle of it is like a smaller diameter. Uh, Chris Ankle, yes, Prusa or Super Slicer. So yeah, I probably would show the uh, the picture then. Macros. Was getting it on the Mobius parts. Um, I, I would refer to the STLs, make sure they don't also have a curve in, because I know a lot of Boron parts have curves and whatnot, because they, they look cool. Ooh, printing. I need to print my Voron uh, polycarbonate carbon fiber. A spec is ABS. I'm going to encounter any issues. Um, so people have tried, I think, PC ABS or PC CF in the past. Um, it can be issues with cracking. I think polycarbonate, um, I would honestly prefer PC ABS over PC CF um, because the way 
additives to your filament like carbon fiber uh, work is they have to be so small that they can pass through the nozzle, okay? Think of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber works because it's strands, right? It locks together. But when the strands are so small they can fit through a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it's really not a lot of strands there. Two, you, the carbon fiber doesn't increase strength at all across layer lines because you lay down plastic in layers. So if you're, it really depends on the way the part is designed. You might see no benefit at all or detrimental because carbon fiber just doesn't stick to carbon fiber by itself. So you actually lose layer adhesion, um, usually with filled plastics. Um, also, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's PC or nylon, one of them um, has an issue where if they get like grease or oils in them, it deteriorates them which considering you have linear rails with oil in them or grease, um, if you get, or and bearings as well. So if your bearings start leaking grease or whatever, it can cause issues. Um, I, I would look into that. But we recommend ABS because ABS just works. We know ABS works. Um, plus also, you don't want your parts to be super stiff. The gantry does need a little bit of flex to it when it does the quad gantry leveling. Um, and also, if you have a nozzle crash and all your parts are super stiff, you might break something worse before, you know, I've done nozzle crashes in my ABS parts and I, I've watched the whole carriage go eh, and you're like, oh shit, and no damage because ABS, when it flexes, can return to its original shape relatively easily. Like it's nice to have a little bit of spring, but you don't want it falling apart. Yeah, okay, so Raymond, yeah, uh, polycarbonate doesn't like petroleum-based products. So think about it, if you have a PC part with a bearing in it and, you know, the bearing starts to get warm and leak a little bit of plastic or leak a little bit of uh, grease or oil and that gets into your part and starts deteriorating and then you get a crack and then it fails. So here's the thing with the, uh, the pressure advanced tuning. You actually don't have to finish the print. You just need to get to the point of the print where it, uh, you could see that it's good. So, and it'll be easier to see, you know, I have a video on my channel uh, going over this in detail, um, but basically there's a certain point, you're looking at the corners and the corners will go from having way too much bulge to really good to being really like wispy, like there's not enough plastic there. And that's your pressure advanced settings. So eventually you, you got crappy corners, crappy corners, not as bad, not as bad, not as bad, good. And then not as bad, not as bad, bad. So you just have to get to that good part. And then once it's good, you measure it and you're done. So yeah, you, you wait, to, you just can watch it. And then once it starts to look like crap again, you're done. You can cancel the print. Or in this case, I'm just gonna hit e-stop because canceling a print uh, does as a negative China. Actually, how loud is this printer? Yeah, it's not bad. Honestly, I'm surprised the bearings aren't as bad as they are. I didn't pack them with grease or anything. Uh, good vid idea is perfecting ABS print quality. That's why this guy is being built, is to do intro to ABS videos, essentially. Uh, overhangs are always bad, even with 20% cooling. Um, Terrence, make sure um, in your slicer settings, um, I don't know what slicer you use, but this kind of applies to a lot of them. Um, you don't need to watch the intro again. You're already here. Um, let's see here. Okay. Where is it? So these settings are some you're going to have to look at if you're having issues with overhang and these can help. I'm not saying they will help, they just saying they can help. Um, I should have had this one on with Cura Optimized Wall Printing Order. This cuts down on print time. But anyways, outer walls before inner walls. You want to make sure that's turned off or whatever equivalent in your slicer is. You want the walls on the inside printing before the outer walls. So that way when you print the wall, 
it has something to the, the side of it to kind of grab onto. If you try to print an outer wall first, it might just droop off, okay? Um, so you want to make sure that there is uh, selected. And then what was the other setting I, I turned on? I can't remember. Eh, I can't remember what it was. But that, that is a common one I see. Um, wall printing order is something you want to pay attention to. Um, also, you need minimum layer time. You need time for the walls to set up. So if you're trying to print one object by itself, um, and this is why I have a million benches on hand. Okay, so these are bad benches. These are benches printed at 300 millimeters a second with 7,000 acceleration. These are bad benches, but they drive home a point. These are both ABS, by the way, too, okay? That overhang looks like absolute doo-doo on the front, okay? Like you can see, that's a bad overhang. This overhang doesn't look as bad. It's still a bad overhang, but it doesn't look as bad. This print was printed at the exact same speed settings as this print. I did not change any settings in my slicer between this print and this print, okay? And if you can look, one of them has a much better bench sheet, okay? The only difference is I printed four of these at the same time, okay? Four boats versus one boat. That gives the plastic time to set up. So if you are trying to print one object um, with an overhang, or depending on like, you know, it might be a taller object so everything else is done, you want to give your layers time to set. So you have two ways of doing this. You can either tell it to have a minimum layer time so that you, it, at minimum each layer takes 30 seconds. So if there's a layer that it would finish in 10 seconds, it slows down your speed so that it prints that layer in 30 seconds. Or I prefer printing multiple objects at once. That way your speeds aren't changing throughout the print, which can lead to some visual defects. Usually it's just cosmetic, but if you're like printing a tower and halfway through the tower, you're printing at 50 millimeters a second and then the very top of it, you drop down to 20 millimeters a second, you're probably gonna see in the print where that speed change happened. So try printing multiple objects at a time. If you cannot do that, I would try lowering your minimum layer time. Also, Cura has some awesome bridge cure, uh, bridge settings, which can help overhangs and bridges. So, um, yeah, fan ducts and PCCF, it, they do look nice. So stuff that's just straight up cosmetic, go ahead. Uh, Chris Angle Knight, good night, man. You're probably gone by now. Uh, Bedslinger, suggestions for grease lube to make them quiet. Uh, liquid molly, blah, 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 blah. I just use white lithium. White lithium and pack those bearings. That's what I use for the most part. I guess bearings are not good for 3D printers. Um, yeah, so the problem with I guess bearings, I guess bearings are good for objects such as pick and place machines, um, something where it just has to go from X to Y and what happens in between doesn't matter. As long as it can go from X to Y a million times, it's good. The problem with IGUS bearings, and I have used IGUS bearings in printers, is their static um, motion. When, when an IGUS bearing is stopped and then you have to get it moving again, it takes more force to get it moving and stop that initial resistance uh, than a, a traditional linear bearing with ball bearings, right? Because they, they roll on each other. So. What happens is, is if you're trying to move from a dead stop to a move, or you're trying to change directions abruptly, it actually can cause a little bit, it's very insignificant, but it can cause issues with print quality. Uh, my V1 had, I guess, bearings for a while. And basically, I was able to get crisper corners with traditional bearings than with I guess bearings. Everything was still fully functional, and in you know cosmetic prints, you're never going to notice it. But if you print a cube side by side, I did get slightly crisper corners. Uh, air bearings on a printer; these are cheap, do-it-yourself 3D printers, CNC machines. Like certain things that work really good in industrial CNC, just does not scale down to our size and price point, unfortunately. Like if you're having no issues with the IGUS bearings and you're fine with the quietness and whatnot. Like, I'm not saying they're bad. I just, I think the 
they're over suggested and they're over hyped. Like if you already have them all and you have no problems with print quality and then your print printer print's fine, you might as well keep them in. So I'm a fan of MGN Rails, considering trying the Igus ones as can get free samples. Same thing with the Rails. It's because it's 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 they don't have a, a, a rolling surface. They're reliant on uh, dissimilar materials and, and, and low friction. So yeah, stiction is the uh, the correct proper term. It's called stiction. Because everything else in 3D printing has horrible uh, uh, terms. Because everything's incorrect with 3D printing terms if you ever actually pay attention. I'm only talking on the Y axis and the producer is loud as hell on Y. Um, if you can get like good Masumi bearings and make sure your bearings are orientated properly. Uh, what I'm trying to say with that is, let me pull up um, an aid here. So this is my graphical aid, okay? So if this is your printer, okay? And this is your rod, okay? And this is down, okay? This is down, this is your bed, okay? So you got your two bearings, okay? This is awesome art, okay? Nobody say anything. Now, if this is your rod, when your bearing is on the rod, the ball bearings should be like this, okay? Okay? If you're, when you put your bearing on, if the ball bearings are orientated like this, this is no. This leads to more noise and it's not as good, okay? Because now, with gravity, everything's riding on this one bearing. Here, everything's kind of balanced, okay? So this is good, this is bad. This also makes more noise, I've found. So, yes. So this is how you make sure your bearings are good. When you orientate them, they gotta be like that, okay? This. Uh, John Clark, $20, thank you man, appreciate it. Uh, good night, TV time with the wife, enjoy the stream, thanks again. Thank you for joining us. Also leads to holes in your rod. Yes, that's one of the reasons why my monoprice light thing, I wish I still had the rod, I threw it out. Uh, it had grooves, literally like 20 thou grooves in the rod from the bearing digging into it because it just seized up and it, they were orientated like this. They were bad. So. so you might, it might be worth checking that um, just to make sure your bearings are orientated correctly. If Prusa built it, it should be good because I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing. Like, I, I, I will never buy a Prusa, but they're they're good printers, especially for those that just want something out of the box that works. If they need it for like a semi-professional setting, like a school or a business that just, you know, needs to be able to print fixtures or some small knickknack repeatedly and they just want something that works and they don't need to tinker with, I got nothing against Prusas. So we're not having stuff fall apart, so we're good there. I do see some Z wobble, that's for sure though. So we do have some Z wobble in this printer. I'm honestly not that concerned about it. I'm, um, I this again, educational crappy printer. Uh, is this the pressure advanced test? Yes, this is the pressure advanced test. We are tuning pressure advanced right now. Uh, my Prusa came with non-hardened rods from the Bad Batch. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, but the issue of trying to get them replaced was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Like, I was kind of lucky. Um, I got my hands on... Well, I only have a few left, but the rest are in this printer. Um, these are what I used on my V1. These are nitrated hardened H13 ejector pins. Um, Rockwell 70. And they are stiff as all hell. And that's what I use for my... Uh, my rods. So, and those are actually still in here. So I can put my hand in here and it does feel a little bit warmer. Actually, let me see, I'll be back in one second. I think I have a thermometer.
do have one. Okay. So it's 56% humidity in there. This was in my bathroom. Let me clean that so can actually read it. Or the laundry room, I mean. There we go. What makes this printer special precious? It is made out of spare parts and hopes and dreams. And it's supposed to be a bad printer so I can show people how to print ABS on a normal printer because if I try to show you know do videos on how to print ABS on a Voron that's kind of like trying to teach somebody how to drive using a Corvette it's kind of uh, it doesn't make sense but if you do want to see something funny because I did find it um, this is the lead screw from my Monoprice Select Mini that is the lead screw from my Monoprice Select Mini for reference this is a standard T88 lead screw that you find in pretty much, or T8 whatever size lead screw that you find in most 3D printers. So in the Monoprice Select Mini, this is literally just an M4 threaded rod. This was what I had for a lead screw in that printer. That's why your steps, like your magic number for steps are like some weird like four digit decimal. Yeah, threaded rod for an axis was fine back in, you know, 19 dickety two when uh, people were using, you know, nylon weed whacker wine, but um, it's the future now. Um, we should be using, you know, better equipment. Well, we're not having layer separation, so that's good. So yeah, bumping up it two or three walls was definitely what we needed to do. Uh, do you think the Ender 3 V2 will be okay for ABS and, and a box? Okay, so you buy an Ender 3, you swap out the heat break, because right when the Ender 3 comes, it has a uh, PTFE lined heat break. Go buy a Triangle Labs or other generic good quality knockoff Chimera heat break. You can swap the heat break with the Chimera one. I think it's slightly longer, but you can compensate for that. Um, and that gives you an all metal heat break. So now your hot end is capable of printing ABS temperatures without giving you the cancer. Also, get a better extruder. Build a Mobius 4. You're gonna need the BMG gears anyways for, uh, or just go buy a Triangle Labs or other good knockoff BMG extruder or a, a legit BMG, uh, Bontech BMG if you want. Um, Cause the extruder that comes on the Ender 3 is garbage. So get a proper extruder, get a, a Chimera heat break for it so you can print all metal. Um, and if you need to get a glass bed because the beds on them are shite. Um, and then put it, a cardboard box around it, print your ABS parts, and then once your Voron is built, take your Ender 3 and sell it. Or just keep it in the garage or in the closet for a backup printer, because one printer is none and two is one. Have you tried know anything about the Orbiter extruder? Uh, yes, the Orbiter, there's a variant for it for the that fits on the Voron V2 or the, the afterburner tool head called the Galileo. Um, it's good. A bunch of people have them in the Voron group. I just don't have one because I haven't had the time and there was like, I didn't get involved with it when it was being worked on. Um, but they are good. I just, all mine have direct feed afterburn or clockworks, which are basically BMGs. So I haven't had the chance to kind of, or the ability to justify getting the stuff for one. But yeah, Raymond has one. He likes it. They're like, they're good. I just haven't had a chance to play with one myself. How are we doing on print time? 53%. I'm gonna have to shift this bed over too, which is gonna suck. So as you can see, it's 26 in there. So it, it isn't, it's actually still going up. And again, this is just a pile of this is just cardboard laid around the printer with a big hole in the top. Like, this just shows you, once you hit about 30, 
30 is, in my opinion, the magic number for ABS. Once you hit about 30 and you're printing ABS and you have no drafts, it gets significantly easier, okay? Uh, Maker Viking, hi guys, hello. Um, but yes, 30, in my opinion, is the magic number. If you can ghetto a solution to get an enclosure um, and you can hit 30 Celsius, it makes stuff so much easier. And then once you hit 30, if you can hit 40 to 50, that's good. Above 50 to about 70 is amazing for ABS. Once you start getting above 70, you start running issues with the printer itself. Um, for example, if you have a Prusa Mark III and you put it in an enclosure, and if it happens to get to 70, you're printing, your parts are PETG. PETG at 70 ain't great. Um, yeah, don't get a Hemera, please. I, I'm, I don't like the Hemera. Uh, and yes, there is no mods for it. It's basically completely incompatible with the way the tool head works on a Voron. Um, so yeah, um, and I have issues with Hemera besides the fact that they were selling a product that they haven't been able to manufacture and had issues with and they break. And they said they fixed it, but you still can't buy one. So I, I don't know. Uh, like I'm sure it works, but I, I just don't trust it. I'd rather go with just a, a, a traditional setup with a, a BMG. Uh, can you open Fluid on mobile and show us how it looks? It really debating this in main sale. I tried. Um, my router is kind of crappy, and I have this issue with pretty much all my printers where if I'm connected to it on one computer and I try to open it on my web browser, it just doesn't work. So let me try. It's like a DNS issue or something. I think there's a picture of it though on the Discord, or not the Discord. Um, let me see here. Uh, Shift Pigeon, 199 Vibes. Cheers, man. Thank you. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Yeah, I can't get it to open on my phone. But if you're curious what it looks like on a phone, um, I believe it's this. This is what it would look like on your phone, and then you can just open each one. So that's what the interface looks like on a phone. Yeah. My phone just won't connect to it because crappy Wi-Fi. Uh, Hemera alternatives. What do you suggest for very flexible filaments? Uh, a good hot end. E3D V6, Triangle Labs V6, Hemera, or, uh, Hemera. Um, a Dragon, Triangle Labs Dragon, Fetus Dragon, Mosquito. And then uh, slap a, a BMG clone or legit on top of it. Like, all you really need to do is have a constrained filament path. The shorter, the better and print slow and minimize retractions and go from there and you can print flexibles. Um, John Combs with a network issue be the number of clients you are allowed. I'm thinking because I, I had this issue with Octoprint back in the day too. Uh, main sailor fluid is their preference? Yes. If you go to the beginning of my stream, well after the stream, make sure you finish watching. Um, I had them both open at the same time. Functionally, they work exactly the same. The, the install is exactly the same. It's just, which one do you prefer? Uh, Hamera works great, except with flexible. That's not a Voron. I are confused. Okay, everyone, that's uh, Max, Mr. Russian Cat Food, chiming in. Um, there we go. There, that was a Voron in the picture. Oh wait, you haven't seen anything out. Like, look at this enclosure, man. Look at this enclosure. This is, you know, the box the computer case came in. And we are hitting, it's actually the temperature is going up. I, ha I didn't put the probe in uh, when the print started, but we're up to 28.8 Celsius. And this is just four pieces of cardboard stuck around it. Like just leaning against each other with holes and gaps in the side and whatnot. Uh, Christopher Gardner. Ten dollars. Digging the, your apron brogue. Look good. Thank you. Although I gotta fix the strapping on it, it's starting to come loose. 
Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> So, again, with enclosures, you don't have to get fancy, especially if you're just trying to bootstrap yourself to a better printer. Like, yes, you can get fancy. Like, if you... Why do I keep hitting that button? If you want to get fancy, if you're building a Voron, okay, order your Misumi extrusions first in your enclosure panels, build the frame, and put the frame over your printer and use that as an enclosure. Like, there, there are ways you can do enclosures really easy. You don't have to go crazy with enclosures. And I, I know a lot of people like the lax, okay? The problem I have with the lax here... Uh, let me find a picture of it. Okay. Everyone does lax enclosures, right? Build a lax enclosure. Build a lax enclosure. Look at this. Okay. Oh, it's a video. Let me... Skip all the way to the end. Okay, so look at this guy's video here. This is his enclosures, okay? Now, I'm hoping he did this, well, no, he's got temperature, so I'm hoping he did this for, like, humidity or noise reasons. But look at all this volume. Heat rises, okay? You don't want your enclosure any taller than it needs to be because now all the heat is going way up here, and you don't want it any wider than it needs to be. Square cube law is a thing. The bigger the volume of your enclosure, the more it takes to heat up and the lower the temperature will be. So you want your enclosure literally as small as possible. That's one of the reasons the V2s are great, or any Voron is great for ABS, is because the frame is as compact as possible for the build size. And then we strap panels to the outside. There's no enclosure because the printer is the enclosure. You're getting the most out of it as possible. So yeah, so the lax style of enclosure, I find too big. Like, I know the standard one isn't too bad, but when you go to enclose a printer, especially if you're trying to bootstrap for ABS, go as small as you can. Uh, lax enclosure, so much plastic. Yeah, because it, it's cardboard. It's, it's cardboard paper, like mache, basically. It's, it's Ikea. <laughs> What do you expect? Although it was funny, the first time I went into IKEA, they actually they opened one in my town, um, and then they closed it because it was only like a, a pickup center. But I went in there for the first time a couple years ago, and uh, I saw a lax table, and I was like, oh my god, it's one of those things. So, well, it's still printing fine. Although I think we're past our point where it's starting to get crappy, so we're just gonna let it go. Uh, anyone print Ninja Flex with the afterburner? Um, I think Ninja Flex was, some people have done some feet out of it. The afterburner setup handles flexibles very well. It basically, you go straight from a Bontech geared extruder, so a dual feed extruder, through like 27 millimeters of PTFE tube directly into your hot end. Like it's pretty much as constrained as you can be given the size and the location of everything. So the, the, the afterburner is a really good tool head. I, I like it more than the Hamera because everything's arranged vertically. Like I don't like the way the Hamera is where everything's spread out and then you also still need to put ducts on it for cooling. Is a switch wire able to print at boron speeds? Um, pretty much yes. Um, maybe not so high accelerations, um, but it is stable, able to print at the 40, 80, 120 or 60, 90, 120 that a lot of people print uh, boron parts at. But yeah, it's still a bed flinger, so it's going to be you know a little bit louder and lower accelerations. You, you have more moving mass, but you do get those really fast set hops. So, uh, the socio uh, V zero or switch wire uh, really depends. If you currently have a printer and you're looking for something like kind of cool to sit on a desk and print small things, go with the V zero. Um, if you already have spare parts that you're willing to put towards building a, a a bed flapper style printer, go with the switch wire. And yeah, I need to do an in input shaper video. I still technically don't have input shaper on any of my printers. But that's because the one I use the most is still running rep wrap firmware. Yeah, honestly, Max, I'm pretty sure Switchwire at this point is probably the most produced Cora XZ printer. I don't think, 
outside of like seeing demos of them on YouTube of like single ones at like trade shows or um, like rep rap fairs, I've never actually seen more than one of the same one. see so again let me pull up here cardboard boxes look at the, look at that look at that panel gap that panel gap is so good it would put a Tesla to shame look at that okay so and we're hitting 30.1 C literally just by having some cardboard around the printer so imagine if like I actually tape this up and put a lid on it and honestly, that's probably what I'm going to do. So I have some like really small piece of plexiglass left over. Um, so I'll be able to cut and put a, uh, a window. Yeah, it, it's, it's a modern Mendel Cartesian. Um, that's the term a lot of people use for bed flappers. You no, know, it's not Cartesian. Cartesian refers to a, a grid system. So pretty much all 3D printers, except for like polar printers and I think deltas, are Cartesian because they, they go zero to whatever and zero to whatever along a grid axis. So how do I correct myself when I, how do I, <laughs> I just call them bed flappers or bed flingers. Okay, so the print's getting bad again, so we know we're we're, if it fails now, we're fine. But we're at the point where we can tell where our setting needs to be for pressure advance. So I'm gonna go let it go for a little bit longer here. And then uh, I'll end the print. And we will go from there. And or Ormorod? Oh, I think... There we go. Hey look, it's a Prusa Mini, guys. acrylic panels guys look at weight extruder acrylic panels uh, threaded rod for the lead screw printed coupling hey I got a printed coupling in the in the bonsai here um, PCB bed oh yeah just you know plastic bolts right to acrylic oh yeah Yeah, hey, it, it, you know, if I need some IDA cable or some SCSI cable for my computer, I got some right here just in case. Any chance the Voron will come out with a Prusa mini style machine? Um, build the V0. Honestly, I for a while there, I was tempted. That this project was on hold for a good while. I started building this guy back in um, December, I think. December or January of this year, I started building it um, because there was delays in the V0 and whatnot. So, um, and then I stopped after I actually got it built. And then it went from like February until I started wiring it on stream a couple weeks ago where it literally just sat on the shelf. And part of me wanted to redesign it to be, because it this is a thingy verse design. I'm not trying to poo poo on the creator of it, but it does have some issues. Um, especially somebody who plays around with Vorons, it does have some issues. Um, but it's mostly just 
old printer design issues. Like nothing bad. It's just archaic or older ways of doing things. So I was I was tempted to try and redesign it and update it to basically try and be a, a knockoff Prusa Mini, but then I realized I suck at CAD. Um, so I just finished it. Uh, Ruhang Ong, uh, I'm literally building a V0 watching your stream. Awesome, man. I do have, I did do a full V0 build on a stream. So if you go back a bit um, in the channel, uh, there's a full build of a V0 from scratch that was streamed. So if you have any questions or you get stuck on any of the parts, uh, go back and check the streams because I probably ran into the same issue as you. Make sure you follow the manual. Please be following the manual in the order of operations. Oh, something brewing for Christmas. I wonder what that could be. Yep, yeah, wait bye bye to your money, guys. Okay, this print is starting to look like Garbo, so I'm going to cancel it here. So, as I said before, um, when you are doing the pressure advanced calibration, if you're watching the print, um, it's easier to watch with um, PLA because you don't have to enclose it. But when you go to um, print, eventually it'll start garbage. Well, it, actually, it doesn't start too bad, but it starts with no pressure advance. And then it'll slightly get better and better and better. And then it gets to a point where it looks good. And then it starts getting bad again, and then it goes to shit. And we're actually starting to get to the point where it's starting to go to shit. Um, so we're going to end the print here. Uh, and because my uh, cancel print macro doesn't work, I'm just going to e-stop it. Um, move the bed out of the way and try not to burn myself. I broke myself. we go okay take my enclosure apart and we're gonna let it cool for a little bit what do we get up to 30.7 so we got to 30.7 by literally just piling some cardboard around the printer so if I enclose this fully, and I might do a test of that, um, a good way to test your enclosure, tell your hot end to be XYZ middle, or at least 100 millimeters or more off the bed. Um, and then what you do is enclose your printer, turn your bed on to 100 Celsius, and just wait an hour. And then check your, you know, Pull up whatever web interface you have or just go look at your, your, your screen on the front of your printer and see what your hot end temperature is. Because your hot end has a thermistor in it. And if you leave it in your printer for an hour, it should be able to tell you what your printer chamber temperature is. Um, so yeah. So that is how you check what your temperature is in your chamber. I'm just waiting for this to cool so I don't burn my fingers again. 45 degree belt resin printer in a lac enclosure. Oh God. Oh God. What kind of 3D printer? This is a bonsai. Um, let me pull it up here. They keep talking about it, but. Okay. So this is the printer. It's called a bonsai made by a guy named Kaif. Um, it's about a two year old design. And it, it, it's basically like, he designed it as a mini, yeah, scaled down Prusa style 3D printer. Um, stock, it's like 100 by 140 by 100. Mine's like 120 by 140 by like 100 because the way it is. Um, my, I was using extrusions I already had, so my Z is a little bit shorter. Um, I don't have a screen on it because I run it headless, whatever. But yeah, it's basically just a scaled down Prusa style printer. Um, I've done a few minor changes to it because um, this one doesn't have a heated bed. Like it's not designed to have a heated bed. So there is a mod for it though, for a heated bed that I used that's somewhere in here. I can't remember where one of these guys did it. Yeah, this one. So it has a, a heated bed mod. But it, it's basically just a really simple printer that 
I built it because I had enough of the spare parts sitting around that I could just build it with spare parts. So. Okay. Uh, can you put the link in the description? Okay. 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 So here it is if you want to look at it. Should I upgrade my Prusa Mark III Bear clone to Switchwire or save up for a V2.4? Um, upgrading it to a Switchwire, which is an upgrade, um, hardware-wise isn't much. Um, it's mostly printed parts and bearings that you would need if you already have, you're reusing your bed, um, yet you would need to buy linear rod or linear rails, um, but you're you're buying some good hardware. It's not as expensive as building a scratch build V2. And it gives you a good introduction to building your own printer and introduction to the whole Voron ecosystem of printers. And it, you know, learn Clipper on it and all that stuff. So if you already have a Prusa that you're willing, or a clone at least, that you are willing to hack up, um, I would start with that. First intuition of yeah, it would basically yeah, Cetus, which is basically uh, it's a gantry, uh, a single Z gantry style, and just on rails because rails are awesome. Because the advantage with a rail is with a rod, you can only support it on each end because the bearing encapsulates the rod and has to move all the way back and forth. So, if it's a long enough span, you can have flex with a rail you bolt this thing to something and it doesn't move so you have more support across the entire span also it, it's hardened steel and it's you know the carriage you can it's easier to attach stuff to the carriage as well cough prusa zip ties cough so so yeah Okay, let's pop this guy off the bed. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. So we did have a little bit of delamination, which is to be expected. And it's funny. You know how I joked about the uh, the side, the, the panel gap, the size that would, make, that would put Tesla to shame? That corner that had the panel gap is the corner where it cracked. Coincidence? Mm, ABS. And you know what? It does fit a benchy. Okay. Uh, from Mobius 3 to Mobius 4, just the threaded inserts added to the bomb. Uh, I think, I don't know if the belt is different. I can't remember. But yeah, it, it, the parts-wise, it's not much. Okay, so let me move this out of the way here. Because now we're going to have to do some math. chance and before I remember it I gotta remember I got to bring that corner up or there we go. okay so I don't know how good the focus on this is gonna be let me actually put this on my main screen so I can see okay so if you're looking at this you can see, trying to get right lighting. Oh, this is going to be a bitch. Come on down. Bend up. Wobble, 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 wobble. You can see that it's basically bulged corner, and then it gets good right about here, and then the corner starts to fall apart and look like crap. Okay? So we have. Bulge, 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 bulge. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. And it goes crap again. 
Now, if you were to continue printing it, it would just keep getting worse and worse. It's already bad. We know it's bad. We, we don't need to go anymore, okay? Oh yeah, I'm plugging the fan. Um, let me see here. Let me just make sure it's cooled down enough. Oh yeah, it's already down to like 50. There we go. The joys of a runaway fan. Well, not runaway, but continuously on. So anyways. Uh, oh, let me check up on chat here. Why are ball screws like that not used in 3D printers as often? Ball screws are expensive and bulkier for the most part. Um, that's why you usually see lead screws is again, it's a 3D printer. You don't need as much precision and backlash control as you do a CNC machine. Um, so usually a lead screw is just good enough, especially when it comes to cost. Okay, so lighting is kind of hard to do this. But essentially what we're gonna do, we know it's bad at the bottom, it gets good about here, and then it's bad at the top. So you're gonna need a vernier or some sort of scale. Now, if all you have is you know just a, a ruler or a scale, you can eyeball it and get close enough, okay? But if you have a vernier, that's usually more accurate. Okay, you don't want it in fractions. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from the very bottom of the print, don't measure from the top here, where you got this little printed tab to keep it down, but measure from the bottom and just measure to where it looks good to you, okay? And then once you think it looks good, that's your uh, measurement. Oh, right about there. And if you don't know, if you're like kind of err on the side of caution, on the low side. Because if you go too high, you'll under extrude. It's better to slightly over extrude than under extrude um, for pressure advance. So. So we'll go right about there. So we'll go with like 12.5. Or you know what? We'll go. We'll go right on thirteen. Okay. So, uh, did I? No. Uh, flipper pressure advance. So now we're gonna do some math. Okay. So you measure up to where you think it's good. Okay. And then you do this math here. Okay. So get your calculator out. And it's basically whatever your pressure to advance start is, which is zero, uh, plus your height times whatever your factor is. So since we were doing with the direct feed extruder, our factor is 0 0.005, okay? So basically 13 times 0 0.005, 0 0.065, that is your pressure advance setting. And that's it. That's how you do your pressure advance. And then you go into your uh, printer, config, edit, extruder. Uh, what's the command for pressure advance? I think it's just pressure underscore advance. Pull it up here. Yeah, so it's just pressure advance. So go to your extruder. If you don't have, if you already have the line there for it, add it, or you don't need to add it, but this one doesn't have it because this is a Ender 3 profile. So 0, what was it, 0. 0.065? Yep. And then add a smooth time. Again, if you already have it, you're fine, but if not, add that. Um, I just default's 0.040. And then that's it. 
and then save it. Now, again, this is Clipper, so you just save it. Um, from where restart, boom, now it's an updated. Now we have pressure advance. So, uh, Bear Cool, what is pressure advance? Okay. So let's go back here. So pressure advance is basically compensating for the tendency to over extrude in corners when doing direction changes uh, of an extruder. This is usually due to pressure. So it's extruding, but as you slow down for the corner, there's built up back pressure and it kind of oozes a bit. So you can see that here. I know black is kind of a bad color for this and I don't have the greatest lighting, but you can kind of see here at the bottom how the corners kind of bulged out. And then right about here, it gets pretty good again. It gets like you get a nice clean corner. And then up here, it start to kind of go to crap because it gets uh, under extruded. So you're, you're running out of plastic basically. So pressure advance is basically a setting to compensate for this. So that way our corners come out good. So we set it to basically have a setting that mimics this constantly. So that way now when we're printing and we go to print uh, anything with a corner, the corner will be nice and clean. So that is pressure advance. Okay, oh man, chat. See, Russian cat food shows up and chat goes crazy. Let me catch up here. Okay, unplug the fan, I did that. Uh, ASA is a little bit more brittle. Um, yeah, it can be. I haven't played around a lot with a lot of ASA. Uh, yeah, don't do PETG. Please don't do PETG. PETG is like, if you literally cannot print ABS and you want to build a, a Voron and you can only print PETG, print it in PETG and then immediately reprint it in ABS. Uh, I have a rat rig V core pro 50 by 50 by 50, which I need to build. How could I Voron it up? Put an afterburner on it. Yes. Put an afterburner. That's a good, afterburner is a good tool head and clipper with fluid or mainsail or whatever. Uh, Voron 2.4 is best bet for, uh, outer dimension. Oh, space constrained. Okay. Um, if you're worried about space, like 500 by 550. Yeah, so that would be a 350, I believe. So uh, if you build a 350 spec V2, that'll get you within 550 by 550. Because my tall boy here is 330 by 330, and my X and Y are 490. So if you build a 350 by 350, you'll be within the, the your size constraint there. Uh, oh, for height, you would need to go shorter though. Because if you only have 50 millimeters of height, that puts you at 250. Because with the motors, um, you're looking at, actually no, it would be, yeah, because that is 80. Yeah, you, you'd have to go with like 230. If you go, because the motors, um, the, the Z motors add to the bottom. So if you go on like the Voron configurator, um, let me load it up here. So if you go to the Voron configurator here and you want to build like a V2, okay, configurator, direct feed is the best option, new build, uh, go with blind joints because they're cheap and they work great, generic chain, whatever. These are like the stock sizes, but if you want a custom size, so say you only have, so how much did you have? 550 by 550? Or 50 by, f uh, okay, so you have 550 by 550 by 600 millimeters, okay? So 550 by 550, or no, that's not what we want, we want to do. 550 by 550 by 650? Or 600, okay, 600. Okay, so you would be able to build um, minus 80 because you're, your motors here with the feet and everything is about 80 millimeters, okay? So it wouldn't be 400 Z, uh, you would be able to do 320, okay? So I wouldn't recommend going above 350. So if you build a 350 by 350 
by 320 boron. That would fit within your allowable size area. So, uh, afterburner is three to one. Uh, Mobius M4 is four to one. Yeah, that's a great thing about the afterburners. You can swap uh, tool heads. Like this is. How long was I muted for? I hate when I do that. I hate when I do that. All I, yeah, all you hear is the voices in your head. Okay, what time is it? Oh shit, okay, 10.50. So that's probably gonna be it for the stream today. Um, as always, I leave it open when I clean it up. So, general chat portion of the stream. If anyone has any questions about anything. Dang it, I always forget to take the filament out of these. I gotta plug it back in. Ugh. Turn it back on. Uh, the tool head talk. Okay, so afterburner is good because you can swap the hot end portion of the tool head with like four screws and two clips, and you can easily just swap it all about. What bagel is the best bagel? A donut. Fight me about it. Is cereal a soup? Eighty people here. So I hope everyone had a good stream today. I can't have to go fight Uber again. Oh, you're going to come up here. You guys aren't allowed up here because you can't get your Rona under control. Americans aren't allowed up here. They shut you down at the border. Okay, got to heat my extruder back up, which means I got to plug the fan in. I'm still peeved about that. Like, honestly... Canceling Murph is the biggest, my biggest anger with the whole Rona thing. Yeah, I know the fan's back on. Sorry, guys. Here. Block the noise. Oh, wait. Russians hold grudges well. Ooh. Ooh. And you're used to our winters. Damn it. Yeah, that print actually came up pretty good. It'd be a lot better once I get this properly enclosed. I know, Murph. And honestly, probably next year's is going to be probably canceled too, because it's what, April? And I don't think everything will be kind of good by April. Uh, so given I had sourced my own bed, would have warranted to work with the outer dimension of 550 by 550? Um, the only reason I wouldn't go with an outer dimension of 550 by 550, uh, Vincent, is Core XY, once you start pushing longer belt runs um, and larger sizes, the belt runs get pretty long and it became it becomes more of a pain to tune and keep tuned properly. Um, you also can't run it as fast. So if you absolutely 100% need the 390 by 390 build volume, um, I can't stop you, but I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you actually need that print volume that's my uh kind of word on it there is i only recommend going as big as you need because if you only go as big as you need it's easier to keep things tuned it's easier to keep your enclosure heated um it's cheaper um 
I just recommend only going as big as you need. Now, if you absolutely need the biggest print volume possible, um, there are other motion systems other than Core XY that scale better to those larger sizes. Um, but it's a self-built DIY printer. I can't stop you from building a Voron that big. I'm just letting the hot end cool off again. Uh, would you recommend upgrading the tool head mat if you want to print nylon? Uh, ABS would be fine. I would, if you're gonna print like super hot stuff, like if you're gonna be pushing your tool head past 260, maybe go with like a nylon or uh, a PC uh, fan duct or the stuff directly around it. But like on the on the afterburner stuff that's like you know beyond that. Um, so essentially, just this portion you would want to print in the higher temp stuff. Maybe the front fan duct at most. Any tips on squaring the Z gantry on switch wire? Uh, you have a 0.1 millimeter tilt on the X axis. I can't figure out how to square it properly. Um, so it, what I would do is if you have like blocks, like, like one, two, three blocks or two objects of the exact same size, put them on your bed and then tune your belts so that your gantry is equal to the bed. Um, if you have a 0.1 millimeter variance, and by the way, mine had like a 0.3 millimeter variance when I did my first print and the bed compensation just took care of it. So I didn't have to worry about it, but yeah, you know, it's racked. So I did fix that. Uh, dead time later folks. Take care, Max. Uh, what motion system would I recommend for a bigger printer? Uh, straight up Cartesian. Um, I would I would still go box frame. So I would still go a box frame printer, moving Z if you need to. Um, it's just simpler. And then I would have, you know, my X run beyond linear rails because I love linear rails and just have a, one or two motors driving the X. And then for your Y gantry, linear rails with a Y motor on the end. So that way the motors are only driving one axis each. You won't be able to go as fast as the Core XY, but it will be beefier for a larger setup. You, you can go big with Core XY. The problem is, is if you're trying to do, you know, Voron stuff where you're trying to print 300 millimeters a second at 7K Excel for stupidness, which don't, we don't, I don't normally print that fast. I only print that fast just to show that I, I can print a Benchy at 300 millimeters a second. But Core XY, you build a Core XY because Core XY is a, uh, is a light, fast motion system. And once you go beyond the point where you can go light and fast, it kind of, it, it, it's points against it. That's my whole reasoning. You know, it's like you're building a sports car out of carbon fiber because it's light, but then you're building a motor home out of carbon fiber with a, with a, a four banger in it. Like it's, you're kind of, I, I'm not, maybe defeating the purpose is the proper term. That's my thinking. Obviously everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And you know, if you can build it and print's great, it prints great, but uh, do you know where there are updates coming to Voron Guide for setups and install and stuff like that? Uh, if it's on the GitHub, it's just whenever somebody updates it. That's why I'm trying to do the videos and whatnot. Um, there's some weird motion systems by Annex and Engineering that uses two motors for... I've seen that. Um, Crow XY is the one I'm thinking of. And I think it is based off of a... Uh, existing setup. Um, let me pull it up here. Yeah, this guy. So I've seen this um, before. Um, oh, yeah, it's updated. Okay, so before the rods were unsupported, they're supported now. Um, that's just beefy as hell. But is it required? I don't know. But yeah, that's also massive and expensive and heavy. Um, so I've seen that one, but you know, I, I have videos on my channel of like, here, let me. Uh, did I upload it? No, I don't think I uploaded it. But yeah, like I have videos on my channel of doing 300 millimeters a second on uh, my printer. But the problem is you can only go so fast when you're melting plastic, right? You, you're taking a solid plastic 
you have to convert it to a, a not a liquid, but a, a, a state that you can extrude it. And then you have to re-solidify it. And usually when you see those printers doing the super, super rapid fast, right? And usually it's, it's, a, it's a very basic object like a square or something with a lot of straight square sides to it, right? And it's vertical, not a lot of overhangs and whatnot. Um, usually they're printing at really low layer heights, um, which if you want to print fast, you don't print at low layer heights. Um, my fastest benchy is 12 minutes. And this is a 12 minute benchy, but it's done with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Okay. Like you want to print fast, you go with a bigger nozzle. You don't print faster. Now the ability to go faster though, does a lot of things for you because if you can do every motion, every travel move at 300 millimeters a second or faster with 7,000 acceleration and you're printing a whole plate of parts, all those little travel moves and all those time savings add up. If you're doing, um, like I print with Z-Hop enabled for pretty much everything. Um, if you print with Z-Hop enabled, having a belted Z like on the V2 and the switch wire, being able to basically skip around um, while you're doing Z hops over, you know, when I printed this guy, there's like a million Z hops. Okay. In the Eiffel tower. Um, whenever you print an object that like something small like this, you, you can't have the nozzle hitting it. Cause if you, the nozzle hits it, it basically, you can knock it over. You can cause a layer shift. So Think of it like a CNC machine. A CNC machine doesn't travel with the cutter touching the steel, right? So my opinion with 3D printers is I shouldn't be dragging my nozzle across the print. Um, yeah, this is the video here. So, so this was a smaller scale one. Yes, it's stringing. It was untuned PLA that was quite old. Um, but that's a 0.4 millimeter Z hop, I believe. So if you're doing a million something Z hops and you could shave half the time off of it, that's where I think the speeds in a fast printer are more beneficial. Because if you want to print good parts, you're going to be running at 40, 80 millimeters a second for walls and whatnot. Um, especially with like materials like ABS and whatnot, where you, you need to let them cool naturally. You can't just hose it down. So my thinking has always been, if you can build a printer that can move stupid fast for everything other than printing, you could save a lot of time. And like, that's my thinking. Voron just does that. Um, that's why my printers are mostly all Vorons except for uh, this guy. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's where you save time, especially if you're somebody like me who like used to print whole plates of parts and it's like a 20 hour print of just parts. So anytime, anytime you're traveling between parts, you're not you're not making money when you're when you're moving printer machine ain't working when it ain't cutting so kind of take that mentality with a 3d printer if you can shave off any wasted time during the actual operation of the print you're saving time you're saving money right so okay so i think i'm going to call it there guys um good chat tonight we got this guy a little bit tuned um after this um I don't know what the next stream will be. I'll, I'll obviously think of something for next Thursday. Um, but if you have any suggestions, um, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Um, ooh, what are we talking about ABS print? What about draft shields? Yes. So if draft shields are great because they keep the heat in, um, I didn't want to enable a draft shield on here. Um, but basically, if you, it's like, a, I won't say cheating, but it's cheating and it works. So if, again, it's like a brim. If you need to enable it to make it work, do it. Um, but yes, so thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I have a Twitter, at 3DP Nero. Go ahead, join me there. Um, I'm on the Voron Discord. Join the Voron Discord if you want to build a Voron. Um, hope you all have a great night. Hope you all take care. Uh, wash your hands and be safe out there. Peace.